Ladies love the skin. Ow. Bring it a little bit closer. The good skin that is. <laughs> That's why having a proper skincare routine is very important and you need to fill the teach. The process is so easy, just four steps. You got your daily face wash. That's gonna clean your face up nice and right. You got your exfoliator scrub. That's gonna open up your pores. You got your AM moisturizer with the SPM 20, which is gonna protect you from the sun. You also got your PM moisturizer, which is gonna make sure your skin is protected throughout the night. Tej has tons of reviews from dedicated customers across the world. I know I said a lot, but it's okay, because guess what? It comes with an instruction card to explain to you in detail what to do morning and night. And because Tej is a sponsor, they're offering my family 30% off along with a free gift. Just click that link that's in the description and fill the Tej. Obviously, our topic to uh, for this show is the thumbnail is the impact of black dads. Got a nice little video. I want to chop up with y'all. I want to get y'all... Uh, opinions on but we have a few pre-topics we're going to get into before we get into the main topic all right so the first topic i want to talk about tonight is why is the 50 50 narrative such a difficult issue to resolve um and the reason i want to bring this up because some of you might say we have beat this topic to death haven't we gone over this already and I and, and from listening to the responses that I have to listen to about this particular topic, I don't think we have. I don't think we talk about this enough because finances are such a big thing. I have pretty much listened to hours of content from every popular YouTuber, from people who don't even describe themselves as content creators. They have hours of content talking about this particular topic. So this is not resolved. Everybody knows that finances are a major issue in why relationships either don't lead to marriage or marriages lead to divorce. So until we get this issue resolved, I'm predicting that we're going to see this a lot more. Because from what I heard yesterday on Venus's panel when they were before I went up there, I didn't really get a chance to speak on this. Yeah, yeah, I did actually. My answer is always the same. Why is this such a hot button issue? Why is this such a difficult issue to resolve? This 50-50 narrative shit is poisonous. Nothing comes from it except lack of marriage, lack of trust, financial infidelity, <laughs> hiding shit from your spouse. Nothing good comes from this narrative at all. So I want to chop that up first. I want to chop that up first. I'm going to drop the link for those of y'all in the chat. Let me play the video. And then I want y'all to come up and tell me what your thoughts are on this particular clip. Because the clip I'm about to play, this is the way I want. You know, this is where my wife is. But... Fellas, this is the type of woman you need to be choosing. Stay tuned for this real quick. Real, real quiet. Every time y'all start having them conversations about who going to pay for what and your man got to do all of the legwork because, baby, listen, around here, I'm going to pay half the rent and I ain't going to complain about it. I might even pay a little bit more depending on what your pocket's looking like for the month because in this economy, I know. I get it. I know. I'm going to take my man on dates. I'm going to pay for a haircut. Bae, I'm about to get a pedicure. I'm going to treat you the one this month because I know you had a long month just like I did. Or shoot, happy Father's Day, happy birthday, whatever. Like, I'm paying for stuff. So, you know, kudos to the girls that got it all taken care of for them. Kudos to the girls that's just like, you know, my man does it all. I don't lift the finger. I lift fingers. I work with or without a man. I'm going to work. And I'm going to take care of my man the same way I want him to take care of me. I don't see nothing wrong with paying a little bill here and there. I don't see nothing wrong with our rent, $1,400. You pay seven. Listen, I get real. <laughs> Let's just clap it up. Oh, now, let me just say this. She was pretty. She was very pretty. And that's how I like them, too. Y'all already know that. Brown. But 
doesn't sense on a woman just make them that more beautiful? I'm trying to tell you, if you want to know, ladies, I'm, I'm just sharing some knowledge with you. If you want to know what it is, she got it. If you want to know what compels a man to do more than for this type of woman than he would do for any other type, this is it. This is it right here. The men know this is a companion. All right. This is not just some chick this that look good. Not just some chick that got her hair laid, her skin looking hydrated. It's not just all the superficial stuff. When a woman talks like that, it does something to our spirit. Damn. Just, just watching that, I was like, ooh, I already got my woman. I see you in the back, Miles. I'm going to bring you up in a second. You see what I'm saying? Look at this reaction right here. He said, I want a piece of that, the action. See what I'm saying? That type of woman, mm, man, she does something to you. The, listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. Every woman that I know from when, when we were young, you know, when we were younger, people talking about marriage, nobody really making any moves yet, except the people that had to because he got the girl pregnant, whatever, whoop de whoop. Every girl that I knew that spoke like that from like college age, every last one of them off the market. There's not one. Ain't not, not one of them survive a day longer than they were supposed to in the marriage market. All gone. Every single one of them. If that was the type of head they had on their shoulders, gone. My man, Miles, what's going on with you this evening, bro? What's going on, Trigger Mike? Oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So what you think about the video, man? What you think about that? What that woman had to say? Why is this 50-50 narrative such a hard issue to resolve most people now just see a relationship as transactional mm -hmm. and don't really like the person themselves and don't don't see the character and the values that person holds which is a lot more which is a lot more to keep a relationship going than just what they see in the sur surface level okay so i don't know if you are you you got a woman you married no, I got a girl I'm just talking to right now. You got a girl you're talking to. So tell me how it, for, tell me how important it is to you that she have. Did you like what that woman had to say, first of all? Oh, of course. Of course. Of course. All right. Of course. So how is important? I like you. I'm it, a sucker for chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. How important is it to you that a woman align with her, her value? You see what I'm saying? Like that, that type of the way she is, her mindset. How important it is to you that a woman has a mindset like she does when it comes to helping her companion? I see that as a major factor, and I always assess that in any girl that I interact with, mm -hmm. go on, like, take out to go on actual dates with and just see how they interact with people and how courteous they are to people as well and their mannerisms and etiquette. All of those things are very key into seeing the type of person they are. Mm -hmm. Damn. Brother Ekin A. I yeah, know what that leaning back in the chair. That means you just put the baby to sleep. He go talk. That's that I just put the baby to sleep with. Baby's right not sleep. Baby's not sleep yet. Oh damn. She's watching cartoon. Okay, okay. Yeah. How you doing, Myers? Hey, we're doing good to see you, bro. Mr. Ikine, how are you doing? Today? Good to see you. Did you good, catch the good. video? Did you catch the video I just played? No. Nah. All right, so. The question on the floor is, why is the 50-50 narrative such a difficult issue to resolve? I'm going to play this video back of you of what a woman had to say when it came to 50-50. It real, real quiet every time y'all start having them conversations about who gonna pay for what and your man gotta do all of the legwork because baby, listen, around here, I'm gonna pay half the rent and I ain't gonna complain about it. I might even pay a little bit more depending on what your pocket's looking like for the month because in this economy, I know. I get it. I know. I'm going to take my man on dates. I'm going to pay for a haircut. Babe, I'm about to get a pedicure. I'm going to treat you the one this month because I know you had a long month just like I did. Or shoot, happy Father's Day, happy birthday, whatever. Like, I'm paying for stuff. 
So, you know, kudos to the girls that got it all taken care of for them. Kudos to the girls that's just like, you know, my man does it all. I don't lift a finger. I lift fingers. I work with or without a man. I'm going to work. And I'm going to take care of my man the same way I want him to take care of me. I don't see nothing wrong with paying a little bill here and there. I don't see nothing wrong with our rent, $1,400. You pay seven. Listen. All right, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the thing is that uh, some people, uh, you see, internet make people that live in real rea in reality to come and lie about their reality. Mm. Like what she's saying is actually what happened in every household. Yeah. But for clout and for attention, and then to tell the delusional ones to keep living in your delusion, right? I'm not doing 50-50, but guess what? When she gets home, she is doing way 50 50. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but she's gonna lie about it. There is no woman that I know out there from college to marital right now that doesn't do 50 50. Mm. And most of these women actually marry men that do way less than 50 50. So mm. I don't know any woman that does, if you're doing less than 50 50 as a woman that means you married to somebody that is very wealthy which they're not yeah but if you're not marrying to wealth or to to uh to financial strength no come on stop lying you're doing 50 50. Mm -hmm. they are all doing 50 50. you see i stopped arguing with them because i know they're all lying before I used to be like, oh no, you got to do 50-50. You must do 50-50. Why wouldn't you do 50-50? But then at the end of the day, I thought about it. I said, there is no woman around me that doesn't do 50-50. Mm. All of them. They all do 50-50. So, uh, but the thing is this, if you're not doing 50-50, right? And your man is not really earning that much of an income and you want him to do 50-50, it, it, it takes a couple of years. Yeah. And he's going to be gone. You might go buy that milk and never come back. All right, Didi, I see you in the back camera real quick. So I know it's you. It's a lot of trolls out here. You stay showing me the top of your goddamn ceiling. <laughs> Yo, you crazy, man. You crazy. What's going on, Didi? Good evening. What up? What up? Chilling, chilling. Did you catch that uh, clip? Oh my gosh, I'm offended. Oh God, let's hear, it. let's hear it. It was disgusting. Okay. Why? Why do you think so? Cause it was just a level of hyper independence and desperation that just oozed from it, and it just really bothered me. It made my ass itch. That's um, an interesting. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. Cause let, let me let me interject real quick. I personally believe what Ethan A just said is actually what's going on. So you mean to tell me that you want to be a kept woman at all times and you've never helped your man out? I have helped, but it was not by choice. It was kind of by force. It was like if we didn't if I didn't do it, it won't gonna get done. I didn't like that feeling. That sucks. Okay. Thank you. Um I have a quick question. Trigger for her. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where this echo coming from real quick. Hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. Dee Dee, are you uh how are you doing tonight, by the way? I'm well and you. I'm doing pretty well, can't complain at all. The question I actually have for you is like seeing how the climate is with inflation and everything, is it better just to be by yourself and just rely on yourself or actually have somebody that you align with? to rely on as well because they always say two is better than one especially in a stressful situation if you have someone that you can align with that would be better if you don't have anyone that you can align with then succeed on your own okay okay kenny what's going on good evening to you what's up good brother good up gentlemen chilling chilling all right, what did you catch the video? Yeah, I saw. I saw. Right. I saw what you showed. But this is one of the common front lines that we face. We had the uh, sister 
DeBerry come up. I'm not pronounce her, her first name, but good evening. Didi, we just call her Didi. Okay, Didi. A woman can create a narrative. Then you put facts on the table, and they'll all they'll still move the goalposts. I'm not saying all, but some, and that's what we need to get away from, in my opinion, because the average man, U.S. wise, makes in between fifty and fifty-five thousand. We're no longer traditional by part, mostly in this country, because depending on where you are. I'm in New York. You need two incomes because things are very expensive. Inflation yeah. is up. Yes. To hear a woman say that every man cannot keep you kept. A man, a man needs to see that a woman is evenly cleaved with him and see the outcome that needs to be to be achieved within a household so that they could be financially sound. A lot of women are out of order. Baby, if you love me, you'll do your nine to five. I'll do my nine to five. We group our finances. This, this is our, this is our goal, and we get there because we are no longer. We don't got no forty acres and a mule. Never had it. Mm -hmm. If a man can, with certain means, put his wife in a traditional setting and she's willing to cleave to that, fine. But that's not the case today and stop making excuses for why you can't see yourself in such a, a dynamic with the man that truly loves you. Then they ask why men do what they do. Why men don't trust women. Why men just play the game because they ain't got time for all of that. Sorry yeah. about that. No doubt. All right. So I feel what y'all saying, man, because... I'm gonna put it this way. What I've what I've noticed in these streets is that when it's time for us to play the victim card, everybody understands the black man's play and how hard it is for him to establish himself in this country. When we have social, you know, things that happen socially that all people can get can get behind, all of a sudden everybody that's black recognizes the plight of the black man and how hard it is. For him to get ahead, how hard other people are trying to hold him back. You know what I mean? But on this particular issue, when it comes to what a man is supposed to do for a woman, now all of a sudden, nobody recognizes that anymore. It's you supposed to do blank because you're a man and I'm supposed to be sitting here looking pretty. Listen, let me tell y'all something 100, like something nobody, in my personal opinion, Nobody that's black in this country should be, even be talking about staying home. That's how far behind we like we are. We don't even have like the multifamily model working on any level to be talking about staying home. Any um, any amount of wealth, the net, the, they say the net worth of the black community is going to be zero by 2050. Nobody should be talking about being kept. Nobody should be talking about staying home. It's grind time for at least two generations. At least. You know what I mean? But um, I'm going to let y'all cook. Y'all got it. Who else got something? AP, came up real quick so I know it's you, bro. All right. Let's get the AP in there. What you got on it, my brother? Good evening. Man, I'm good. I'm good. What's going on with it, Trigger Mike? Uh, I, got a, I got a little bit of time, so I, I decided I would stop through and comment on this. So. And I think the brothers will probably disagree with me, maybe. 50-50 works when we're talking about 20-somethings. And I believe it's highly necessary for 20-somethings to build together, to grow together. However, when we talk about earning potential, we fully understand that at some point, the man will eclipse the, the female in the relationship. And as he grows, he should work to make a softer life for for his wife, because I believe when we talk this fifty fifty, it should be in a marriage, right? I don't I don't I don't think we're talking fifty fifty and boyfriend girlfriend whatever the fuck that is or 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 dating whatever you know like if you're not dating with a purpose, you're wasting your time. But in a marriage, as you build, 
the man should be working to make a softer life for the female. What I don't agree with is when I hear 40-something-year-old men talking about 50-50. So you you mean to tell me you are vetting this female to be your wife or your long-term live-in partner, which means you're moving her into your space. You're not already taking care of your space. You're, you're not already starting to delegate stuff outside of finances for her to do. That's where her 50% kicks in. If you're not vetting right, then then you, you're kind of screwing yourself. But I want to I, I want to say something anecdotally and in my experience. So when we talk about vetting, because I believe that's the most important stage that I think is missed most times or not. When we talk about vetting and we're talking about finances, one of the things I looked at was what does your debt look like? Because she still, my wife still had some college debt, and how was she spending her money? One of the things she had to do was. Show me her finances. It, she was in control of them, but you got to show them with show them to me. I set her a budget. I said, if you're able to follow this budget, we can move forward. She started following the budget I set for her. Yep. So when we finally got married, she was she had cut that twenty thousand. It was twenty. It was like twenty three thousand, whatever whatever it was. She cut that down to the last a little over a thousand in the college in the college. Uh, in her college debt, we had paid off, she, not we, she had paid off her car. That's when I knew she was serious. Those are the things we got to do in order to help create the softest life possible for the female. Part of it is when, when we hear women talk about this, basically we're not relieving the stress, that weight off of their shoulders. Again, mm-hmm. this is just my opinion. Now, in the twi- in your 20s, both of y'all stress and you grow. That's, ju- that's part of it. When, I, when you over 35 and, you st- and, 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 and you're talking about 50-50, what did you do between 23 and 35? What the hell were you doing with your life to where mm-hmm. you weren't running things as a, as a single man should? And I just want to throw that out there. And hello to everybody. Hello, Miss Dee Dee. So here's what I got to say about that. And that was wonderful. I totally agree with you. Of course you do, Didi. Oh, sit, sit your ass down. Sit your ass down somewhere. Let me <laughs> let me uh I don't even really got pushback. I don't even really got pushback. Didi, I agree with you in the wrong truck. <laughs> no, nah, but check what? this out. What you say you can no, no. He said you're on the wrong track, but let me let me actually um <laughs> let me actually rebut not even it's not even a real rebuttal. You know what I think, AP? I think the soft life is an illusion. I think when women start to relax, they do this thing where it's like, oh, you know, we 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 all do it actually. Let me not even just make it about women. It's like when we achieve something, we act like it's always been this way. A lot of women contribute to their soft life. The best example I can make to it is that uh then the reason why I say it's an illusion, imagine. By the time you had a second child, y'all bought y'all first home together. She worked all y'all both worked all the way up until your thirties. Y'all paid down the house. You started getting promoted more. Now all the bills can fit on your side. You start saving large sums of money. You start investing her entire paycheck and all of that. So naturally now you're 45 years old. Like you said, you're in your forties. You can completely pay the house off. Now all you got to do is pay property tax. You making money hand over fist, investment properties coming in, net worth skyrocketed. Now she can either work part time or not work at all. That woman contributed to her soft life. She worked right along with you until the situation became well enough to where she could take a back seat. I'm telling you, that's what happens in most marriages. The woman absolutely contributes. Mackenzie Bezos was a working woman. She was, the, you know, the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos. Was a working woman while he was building Amazon. You see what I'm saying? They all work to the point where the man becomes competent enough at what he's doing, right? Or they're doing something on the side that starts to make enough money, 
gain enough capital to where they got income coming from a stable job. They got income coming from a business, uh, properties they can sell, whatever, what have you. I think that's what really goes on. What are y'all thoughts? I'm in full of work. For, for fun money. Those women are not working for the light bill money. This is a difference no, I think, of what's I think going the women on. Work. Yeah. When when you guys are a lot of the black men that are presenting this 50-50 thing, it is under the pretense that if you do not provide your half of the bills, you're going to go without. But that is what we have a problem with. What when us women have a problem with the 50-50 thing is because we are not interested in doing 50% of the bills and doing 100% or the majority of the domestic work as well. If I don't work the nine to five, I don't want to come home and do a bunch of cooking and cleaning. You're going to have to chip in on that because I'm working too. If I'm paying half the bills, that's what's going to happen. If you want this type of submission that you guys talk about all the time, it comes with having to pay the bills. The women work for fun money, not for money that is used to sustain the household. Mm -mm. Disagree. This uh freaking agree. Uh let me get Hink in there and then I'm gonna get you my Hink. What's going on, my brother? Good evening. What's uh hold on real quick. My bad. Let me get this super chat real quick. My man Perry unlikely with the five dollars says black couples that are the top 10 percent earners are all hands on deck laugh at this not going 50 50 nonsense who's dumb enough to leave that money on the table i'm trying to tell y'all y'all not listening but i agree uh hank you got it bro well i i don't do 50 50 i'm all about one pot yep that's how i run things my house. I, I don't do 50 50 but i know uh, the, the the lady was saying share uh the mess dude no I, I believe in gender roles too so I, i'm not cleaning shit you can watch it you can cook it uh but uh, you ain't gonna have to worry about nothing else outside at home that needs to be fixed correct or, or tank being taken care of you ain't got to worry about that that won't be your problem the only thing you need to do is just let me know car not running right okay no problem he ain't gonna get that get that together if that means I need to put the battery in myself or, or change a spark plug, give a tune up, break job, whatever it takes. That's what I'm going to do. You ain't got to worry about that. Just make sure I'm going to work. Things get broken out, so I got to fix it. But when it comes to, you know, washing clothes, you know, I might help me fold just because I, you know, I ain't got shit better to do while I'm watching a, a, a basketball game or something. I fold clothes. Would you, we'll, 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 we'll talk it up. But I'm not going to go too far other than that. You're going to, Hopefully, keep the bathroom clean, keep me sexed, um, and make sure our kids is well fed and taken care of. But that's just me. Indeed. All right. Can, can, can I comment real quick? Let me, put, let me put it this way. I haven't said anything in a long time. Let me put it this way. Right. Huh? Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can, you just bogarting the whole damn order of things. I said Miles could go after. Uh, oh, my bad. My bad. Uh, Hank, go ahead, Miles. All right. You're right. Okay. Um, I would say to Didi in that case, if you're really saying you have to pay everything to get that full fledged submission, you don't really like the person. Then that's really what that sounds like, because mm. it naturally just comes out. It naturally just comes out if you actually like the person for who they are and align with their character. That naturally just comes out of you. No, it don't. That's gaslighting. But, shit. Okay. Uh, I want to ask. Uh, I want to ask Didi a question because somebody said it, and I forget who said it. It might have been no, no. It was AP. If a woman comes, so our women, black women, owe the most amount of money to the U.S. government for student loans. Should a woman, at the very least, pay off her own student loans if she's married? No. <laughs> I gotta say this, oh, right? I gotta say this. Oh, I'll be you, trying to, you trying to give me gray hair, man? Oh my god! If you, if you, okay, if, you you come, if you come me. into a relationship with debt, right? You are responsible for your debt. That's what it is. You can't bring your debt into a relationship and then hope for somebody else to pay your debt. It doesn't work like that. I wouldn't even put that on a woman. 
uh, to come into my like house that. and start paying my debt. It's not fair to her. No, it's not IRS fair to gonna, me. If I married you today and you owe the IRS, they're going to come after me for your money. Well, well, I'm going to, if you, so but you guess what, but dad. guess what, but guess what, the debt you accumulate while you live with me, if we're married, yes, it's my responsibility and your responsibility. But if you bring a debt to me and you oh, you said I'm going to pay that debt, I got to go divorce your ass so you can go back to your debt. <laughs> because but that debt was never my from, debt. But you want to benefit from the resource, which was the knowledge. You benefited from my debt. resource, too. You're going to benefit you from the knowledge that I gained from acquiring this debt. So No, 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 no. Your knowledge should have paid for your debt. <laughs> your knowledge should have paid for your debt, man. You're not bringing knowledge. You're not bringing debt knowledge. That is not knowledge. That's that trifling, man. How are you gonna bring? How are you gonna bring debt, debt to my house, no. and then you telling me that is knowledge? What the hell is that? A Kenny, real quick. Yo, a Kenny, real quick. I uh, uh order oh in the guy. Yeah, for it. A Kenny, oh, real uh, quick. Kenny, you got it. I I listened to the lady Dee Dee speak. I heard a lot of eyes. I heard I heard a lot of conditional submission. Because Dee Dee's eye. Okay, allow me, to, allow me to land the plane, Kenny. And this is the problem we face. You, you hear Hank. Hank has, he's paid the cost to be the boss. Hank is in a position where his finances dictate how he wishes to run his household. And this is, this is tough love for everybody. I am not here saying like those other people, those talking heads, that you should not have someone to love you and, and go through your struggle with you. He doesn't live where I live. I'm gonna give you an example. 2016, I had to sell my house at a loss because I was a landlord and I had horrible tenants that destroyed the place. 512 is what I signed on for to pay. The house is now a million dollar house that I no longer own. I was left with debt. I had to start from ground zero in 2016, credit squad due, and build back up. During that time of me building back up to where I'm at right now, a woman like that with those sentiments and ideology left me. If a woman truly loves you, she'll stick arm and arm with you. I got you. We're going to get through this together. That's who you love forever. Mm. Not every no man has that cookie cutter. Allow me to finish and I'll give it to you. Respectfully. Every man does not have that smooth sailing through life where he can foot all a woman's bills, put her in Gucci and gold. I truly don't want that. I want a woman that can roll up her sleeves and not give me co complaints about things that she should do naturally. No disrespect to you, Didi. I don't know you, but from your sentiments, you're giving me an idea of this cancerous thing within our community that keeps women alone and stops black, black men such as myself from loving you. And then when we speak what we feel on these panels, you think we hate you or we being zesty or spicy or sassy. I can't hear a man tell me that, oh, I'm supposed to include a woman with death and she wouldn't do the same for me. That don't make sense. Every man, yes, you need to get out there and get something. But not every story is going to be that cookie cutter story where you have everything lined up. We're already playing from behind and it's not getting better. They're already talking about universal income because now you got machines taking jobs. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I'm in a trade where I'm a tech. To hear women talk that way that you want to get pampered, you want to get small, you want the easy life. I come from grandparents that were farmers in the islands. When my grandfather was out there, my grandma was out there reaping. She's picking up yams, avocados, papaya, whatever. They were successful. They lived together till they died. He died two weeks after, 80 years. You ain't finding women like that no more. They'll brother, put their hands brother. in the dirt and work for you. I like my brother, can you lay your plane? Um, go ahead, uh, D.D. At the end of the day, I've lived this. 
So you can talk this all you want, but this is someone who has lived this. And I have supported my entire family during my marriage and all of that. And I'm telling you, it does not work. It's not feasible. It's not a good idea for women to do as a woman who's covered more than 50%. No, I've done that in my family. I've done that in my marriage. So it's not that I am this cancerous woman who I won't didn't say stick you. it out. It's not ad no, hominem. I want to talk about the perspective because a lot of times when you guys talk about the perspective that you're going against, this is coming from women who have been through these things, who have lived through them and who are telling you that that is not advantageous. What is your examples? <laughs> it is best personal experience. Personal experience is my own example. And personal experience, as well as observation of others in my community and family. It does not work out very well for you when you are doing that as a woman. Oh, oh ma'am, can I ask you a question? Sure. So you had that one bad experience. You just assume every man's a... a, a uh, just the same with, as far as it like he, he was bad with his money you know that's what it sounds like so no he, he, no i don't assume that every man is the same well that's what you're saying though ma'am you said since you went through that bad experience that you're you're never gonna do that again because of your, your situation you went through i have went through this bad experience and but at the same time, I also grew up in a household where my father took care of everything. So that also has bearing on how I feel as okay. well. We and understand. I just, so I ended up in a situation where in my marriage, my husband wasn't a good provider, but I grew up with a father who was a good provider. Nevertheless, I value good providers. I've seen them. And I don't make excuses for men who are not good at prof good but providers. But you say yes to that man. Did you know he uh, wasn't a good provider before you married him? No. Didi, I, I got a question. Sure. What is that Chinese food place for, across from the school? Golden City. Golden fucking city. Me and Didi went to college together, for those of y'all that don't know. Golden fucking city. So, obviously, we spent half of a life savings in that month. All right. You know, college students eat like shit, like, you know. But um, when you walk in there, the Chinese lady at the counter, her husband's in the back cooking the Chinese food. That's pretty much the standard setup of Chinese restaurants. What would you call that dynamic? Is 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 that woman slaving? Is she doing something she's not supposed to be doing, or are they working together in their family business? To take care of their family. Should he find somebody else to work there? Yes, he should hire a staff. He um they they she's doing the right thing though by working in her family business. That's the right thing to do. Yeah. But the goal is to get out of there, get from behind the kitchen, both of y'all, and be able to franchise it. Not just both people spend behind you know, behind the kitchen the rest of their lives. Hmm. I think black women are black men are a little too comfortable with seeing their black women and their counterparts work so hard. Like, why do you guys like why are you so comfortable? You know what? Let me your women struggle. Let me bring up so this uh real quick, y'all, and then AP, you got it. Let me bring up this uh message from Richarda. She says if you talk to white married women. They will tell you they spend their money on whatever they want and the husbands pay the bills. Richardo, I got to tell you, that's a lie. That's a lie. And this is the, probably the this is the problem right now. These women are lying. Those white women are lying. L let me tell you why. The average man, I think Kenny said it. Yeah, the let's say the average salary is give or take plus minus $50,000. These people, I, I think it's like 46% of married couples own homes. With the average salary, a man can't afford a house by himself. It takes two incomes to get that house at the average price in the United States of America. So that woman who uh, is telling you she spends all her money on play money, what usually ends up happening is what I explained earlier. 
they have been working post college or into their 20s together. He gets promoted through the ranks. They save up a little money. They get an investment property. Hell, um, I just found this out from a, a mortgage consultant. Family is who give is usually who gives the earnest money slash down payment for their children to buy a house. So yes, they start getting helped out by parents such and such and so forth until he starts making it enough to take take care of the whole family by himself. That's when she finally arrived. And now she's going out and buying all this shit. And she tells you that's what the hell's been happening the whole time. That's not what's been happening the whole time. They are lying to you. Um, JR, I don't, I don't know who this is in the back. Let me uh, come on camera real quick. All right, all right. What's going on, brother? Good evening to you. All right, good evening, guys. Good evening. All right, what you got on the topic? We're going to um, wind this one down in a second. Okay, okay. Yeah, um... Yeah, I'm just gonna say like, obviously I understand that. Is it? I just call her um, DD. Yeah, I understand what she's saying. You know, that um, the whole struggle, love, and all that stuff, right? That a lot of women don't want to go through that, or you know, her experience she's gone through that already or whatnot. So I get where she's coming from, and obviously, mm -hmm. what you like or what the guys are saying, it's like, I understand what you like, Andrew, and obviously. For the young guys growing up and obviously watching the uh, these things uh, unfold, it's hard to make guys want to jump in and have to work hard for yourself and then obviously work hard for the women as well. So I think that a lot of guys obviously were listening to these kind of things and we're sitting back and we're thinking, you know what, I'd rather just work hard for myself and not work hard for the women because like i think it was uh kenny p yeah he said um obviously he went through what he went through and i think he said that his uh, wife left him or whatever it was and obviously for a lot of guys you know young guys it cuts deep you know all right um let me get to the next topic that we're talking about i think that was wait wait I think I wanted to respond to something you said. Um, damn. But I'm going to remember it in a minute. But if you're just tuning in, welcome to the Trigger Mike Show. If you're happy to see us back on the air, send a super chat. At least hit the like button. It helps the channel out and sends the stream out to the algorithm. So what do we got on the next topic? The next topic is, are men wrong for not wanting their significant other to go on girls' trips? I got a little clip to show y'all. These women spilling some tea. I think that's what y'all call it. It's tea. Let's see. Women cheat while they are on girls' trips. I'm going to say 70. So 7 out of 10. Yes. Yes. They be cheating. I'm not going to lie. I love my girls, but we be cheating. Not me, though. I'm not a cheater. Not me. Even the married ones? Yes. They be the worst. The married ones be the worst. I'm going to tell y'all that right now. The married ones be absolutely the worst. You keeping it a bay right now. Keep it on it all the time. I say 50-50 because it really depends on the female. You can't really say, uh, I can't give you an actual percentage because you got some females that don't know how to keep their legs closed and just marry the man because he got money. And then you have some females that really loves the man and they're still going to party. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to let nothing stop them. So it's really 50-50. It's a balance between both. So you would say 50%? Yeah. Okay, so 5 out of 10. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say 92. These bitches be... 92. 92. I'm going to say 92. Yo, well... I'm going to say, because even, even if you're a female, right? If you deal with another... If you start to get kinky with another female, that's cheating. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You start getting drunk, you start kissing on other shit, you're cheating. So, I'm going to say 92, because so I see it a lot. Look, there could be two parts to this. This could be an A. That's mm -hmm. the A, right? The B could be, what if the girl is single, right? Mm. What's the percentage, right, mm -hmm. of women coming out here, period, and fucking? That, for me, would be a 90. The cheating it would be a 75. Yo, those are all women. And I'm not even trying to paint women in a bad light or nothing, but mm. uh, what one thing I hear in these streets is that y'all don't do nothing on girls' trips. These dudes are insecure. Why are you worried about that? So I want to know, are men wrong for not wanting their significant other to go on girls' trips? 
once they are committed to each other. All right, Miles, you got it. No, I. but I always say, like, if I'm in a relationship with a girl, I always tell them, you can either do what you want to do or we're going to stay in this relationship. If you want to do what you want to do, that's fine. Just understand this relationship's over there. All right. Kenny, what are your thoughts after watching that video? Me? Oh, uh, Kenny. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Kenny. All those girls that he chose to pick look loose, and that's no disrespect. Mm. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. You yep. picked the he picked the ratchety ratchet to, mm -hmm. to push the narrative. Yeah. Now, I learned a long time ago: what's for you is for you. Nobody can't take it from you. You have to have trust in your woman. If you see something within a given situation where she's going away and you don't feel comfortable, you should be able to, mm -hmm, baby, I don't want you to go on that. I don't think that's wise. And if your woman respects you and loves you, she'd be like, y'all have a discussion as for why you feel that way. And she'll adhere to what you, what you say and how you feel. Okay. But the average female that i've seen when i've been out i've seen some stuff happen so there's credence there it's a coin flip it depends on the person there's not you can't paint that with a broad brush you put liquor women depending on where they're going are they going on a bible retreat or are they going to south beach them bible retreats be getting the ratchet too though i don't know about that so i'm gonna leave that alone <laughs> But in the name of Jesus, they be throwing that thing back. I'm just saying. To be fair, in the land my plan, it could be 50-50. You never know. You can only you can only trust that the woman that's in your life is doing right by you. All right. All right, Hank. <laughs> this is about to be fun. <laughs> so no, no, my woman doesn't do a uh, uh, girls' trips. We don't we don't do that. So there's a trip. I'll be there too. Yeah. We're gonna make it a couple's trip. So we're gonna have fun in the name of love. It is what it is. Damn. I mean, I feel that though. For real, for real. Like, where the hell are you going? <laughs> That's my whole thing. Like, where are you going without me? Or my or our children. Where the hell are we going? Girls trip. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Well shit. Let me let me get my renew my passport then. All right. I, I've been waiting for this one. <clears throat> Didi, go ahead, firebomb this whole shit with your opinion. What do you think? I are men wrong for not wanting? Go ahead, man. You go. Um, and when it comes down, are men wrong for not wanting their significant others to, to go on uh the trips? It all depends on the reasoning for why they don't want their significant other to go. If you don't want your significant other to go because you fear them cheating then that's a personal problem that, you know, you got some insecurities you might need to handle because you can get cheated on at home. You know, don't nobody have to go across the country to cheat on you. Nevertheless, I'm scared that I don't think it's a, such a high percentage of women sleeping with people while they're on these girls trips and things of that nature because after you get to a certain age, it's like, you're scared of the world and you're like, I don't want no STDs. These people are crazy. You be done yet killed. I ain't trying to take those type of risks. I mean, oh, look, my all right. Because I played college football and I went to Miami. I've seen a lot of things happen down listen, in Miami. Listen. We've I mean, blown sure a many a back that's out. A certain age group, but that's under the no, age of 30, 30 sure. 35 it, year olds. Nah, DD. Yeah, it's it, or, listen, listen. Um, I don't know. I don't know, DD. I don't know if that's true because even when you're saying people are scared of STDs, mm -hmm. look at who has the highest STD rate. So they're not scared as we think they are, right? So that syphilis outbreak. Damn. They were, they're not as scared as we yeah. think. And 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 you know, I don't know if it's just uh you know what I think it is though. Let, let me put it this way, Didi. I think I would I feel what you're saying if you're saying that uh maybe they're not that nasty. What I think is that they look com for companionship in all the wrong places places and they do it all too often. Mm. So 
people don't like condoms. <laughs> Mm. You know what I mean? You go out, you meet somebody, you think y'all hit it off. Like what I've noticed is that a lot of ladies, once they go over a certain age, they are super desperate for companionship and they they think everything is serendipity. You know what I mean? I met this dude and he was standing there and we ordered the same ice cream. So it must be fate. Like, hell no. Hell no. So, nah, man, I, I don't think, I think they actually be out here smashing on these trips. AP. Oh, man, y'all are probably going to disagree with me. Again. So, I kind of agree with Kenny and Dee Dee. Like, okay. first, first as a man, you got to know your yeah. woman. Second, do you know your woman's friend? If she's going, if she's typically going out with, with a bunch of married women and depending on their destination, would would depend on what they're up to. Do you have trust? If you trust a woman, then everything should be cool, right? If you don't, then you got problems. On the other hand, I also believe that women jump the gun when they say uh, 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 you're insecure as a man. The truth of the matter is, I could know some shit you don't know them until we have the, the conversation. You don't really know what kind of protection I'm offering. So, for example, if you're going down to South Beach, wasn't there just a shooting last year on spring break? Mm -hmm. Don't take yeah. your, don't take, I'm telling you that it's a bad idea that y'all go down there. Pick another destination. Um, I had, a, I had one other thought. Hold on. Um, Also, I don't want my woman under me all the time. Go out and have fun. Do go do the stuff that you know that I approve of. And if you're doing stuff that you know I don't approve of, then why are you my girl? Why did I make you my girl? So it's just it's just so many it's so many variables. And aside from that, I'm gonna go on trips anyway. So I kind of believe what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If you trust me, everything is good. I travel I for know. work. I, I mean, gotta, shit. Like, I see what you're saying, real quick, real quick on, on your comment of, uh, about uh, 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 being a, a collegiate athlete. Yes, I feel you on that, but I'm going to tell you this. If you go ahead and put on a, 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 a nice blazer and some nice slacks and go to an upscale an upscale bar and an upscale uh, uh, hotel. Let's just say women can be loose there as well if you if you if you can have the conversation with them. You ain't got to be an athlete for them hoes to be to to be on some other shit. He said them hoes. <laughs> After all that you said, you still call them hoes. Uh, well, those way. types, those types. What other way can you define it? All right, I got you. I got you. Um. Damn, I'm I'm tripping tonight. I don't forgot what the hell I was gonna say. Jr. or Junior, my bad. Yes. All right, what are your thoughts? Would you let your? You know what? No, no. Give me one second. Now I remember what the hell I was gonna say. AP, you said in the beginning you gotta know who your woman's friends are, and I agree. For some reason, I just feel like my wife's friends would never ask to go on no girls trips. They right. all about couple trips. You see what I'm saying? That they would never ask her to do something like that now that she's a married woman. And she would never go. So anytime we do anything out of the country, it's it's both of us. Every time we go on trips, it's with our families or you know, with husband and wife groups. Like I, I really strongly think that most married people transition to that naturally. Naturally, you transition to that when you get married. Yeah, go on guys trips. I don't. I, I actually don't. Um, I got invited to a bachelor party, and I'm just thinking uh, of how, what the fuck my kids going to be doing while I'm gone. They're going to turn this damn house upside down, so I'm probably not even going to go. And Columbia, of all places, they be out there wilding. Oh, yeah. yeah. Columbia, South America, Columbia, or Columbia... South Carolina, Columbia. Let's clear it out. Come on, quick. AP. Who the hell going to Columbia? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be clear now. Because I'm, I've been waiting. 
I'm trying to be clear now. No, nah, no, nah, Colum- Cartagena. Oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> That's yeah, a bad idea for a man. Home. They be trying to go out for a week. Like, dude, what kind of life you think I live? A week? Mm. Let, let's stick let's let's to, to the program because before right. everybody starts. Yeah, Egan, they going to need his uh, uh 30 minutes to talk, so we're going to get Junior in there first. Yeah. Okay. Um, I played on the <laughs> All right, Junior, you got it. What do you think about uh girls' trips? Um. Yeah, I mean, a, a lady gonna do what she's gonna do, right? If she don't want to go, she's not gonna go. Um. So yeah, I think Adili said it. Just because um, you think that she's gonna cheat away on holiday doesn't mean that she's gonna cheat, you know, right next door. So yeah, I'm not really too concerned about that because uh, somebody just said it as well. Um. If they surround themselves around good people or whatnot, um, their friends will probably respect them and she'll probably in turn respect you as well as a man and not go and do those things. So, yeah, I'm going to believe that if my girl wants to go away, cool. But it's not going to be on my money, though. You know, girl strips, clubbing, yeah. or whatever it is, it's not on my money. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. I see money leaving the account, I'm going to be like, Stop where the airlines. Where are we going? <laughs> where are we going? So yeah, like I said, yeah. If they're willing to do it, it'd be on holiday, it could be right next door. It is what it is, but it's not gonna be on my on my money for it to go out on holiday, girls' trips and clubbing and whatnot. That I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna feed them go to the wolves, you know. Got you. All right, Ikane. We got your monologue set up. <laughs> uh, thank you so oh, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 one second. He can make one second, one second. I just want to, I, I got a question. So, we were just talking about 50 50, and when you say not on your money, so your wife's not going to go on a trip on your money? Like, so she's going to no. go broke? Or she got, or do y'all, do you believe in 50 50? No, obviously, if uh, I go with my, uh, if I, if I, if before I, you answer that, before you answer it that, wasn't, it wasn't uh, directed to me. Why are you interrupting me? Can I, if he owes me my... one minute for interrupting me, go ahead, trigger Mike. All right, it wasn't even my question, but okay, go ahead, JR. Or Junior. Yeah, and I was saying, um, yeah, if we're going together, then yeah, you'd be on my money because I co signed that we're going together. But if it's with your girls to go clubbing or to go abroad, I didn't co sign shit, so there's not none of my money getting spent on that. Oh, well, mm-hmm. shit, if she. If she... If she goes and y'all just go together, she, she's single. Why'd say that again? If if y'all just go together and we're talking outside of marriage, she leaving single, bro. She getting bust down by somebody. Go ahead, Ikenay. All right, let me get this super chat real quick, Ikenay. My man, Big Ant with the $10 says, what up, Trigger Mike? And what up, Hink and Mr. Payne? My bad on being late, but I was out cheating. God damn, Big Ant. God damn. All right, Ikine. Yeah, I gotta I gotta say this, right? My wife, when we were dating, she was she got a ticket to go overseas or to go uh, on vacation, and I couldn't make it because I was working too much. She let her ticket go because I wasn't gonna make it. The reason why I said this is this. This is, we can't have the conversation. I can sit down with a woman and have the conversation where she, she can go or where she can't go. I'm not going to have that conversation with her. She automatically supposed to know that she ain't going nowhere without me. And she's not going anywhere without my approval. Because if she goes, she ain't coming back to that same house. We're not going to have this conversation because it bothers me so much how men can be so soft that a woman will have that audacity to come and tell you to your face that she's about to go on a vacation with her girls. Who gave her that audacity? It's you. Because she knows how soft 
That man is. She know the man is a pussy. That's why she could even say it out of her mouth. Because if she respects you and fear you, it will never come out of her mouth that she's going on a vacation, on a girl's trip with her girls. I got to ask you guys a question. One of any of you can answer it. How many percentage of black women are single in the United States? Shit, they me all of them for real, for real. It's like you know why they are all, you know why they are all single? They are all single because they go on a lot of girls' trips. They all want to go on a girls' trip. Mm -hmm. Because they know that a man in his right mind will not take that shit. She won't even ask. Because you know what comes with it. Per the census, it says 66% I don't, I don't are single. Feel, I don't feel you sorry for a single woman. I don't feel sorry for a single woman because it's her choice to be single. Except a woman that is abused, beaten, that's physically beaten by a man. Physically by a man. I feel sorry for. But if you're going to be single past the age of 25, have at it. Right. We have a very different view on relationships. Hold on. Ikenay, that was the most African shit I heard all day. And I talked to my dad today. <laughs> so that takes the cake. So but, uh, so, go ahead, so I don't view I don't view people as property. So so when we talk mm -hmm. about when we talk about fear, that that means that there's some form of ownership. And I simply don't don't agree with that. If she wanna if she wants to go so first of all, you have the conversation before she even leaves. There's, there is a conversation that takes place. And if she decides to go against my better judgment, because I've already told her that, let's say, I, don't, I, I wouldn't like her to go and these are the reasons. If she decides to go, we've already established what will happen if she goes anyway. AP, I disagree with you. You know why I disagree with you, AP? This is why I disagree sure, with you, AP. Let, let me say this real quick. There is a fear, a certain fear that I have for my wife. You understand? There is a certain fear that I have for her because I know the consequences of that action. Fear is not being enslaved. Fear is the fear of consequences. So she should have fear for me because she understands the consequences of her actions that's why i have fear for her because i understand the consequences of my actions i kind of it pisses me off every day when a man or men come and say things that women say it's like we sound like women like we are men we sound like women we can't be doing that shit, man no we can't let's stand on your ground i will say Where this though i'll ahead. say this hold on, hold on i'll say this I stand on what I said where I think as men, we're not even really trying. I don't have the energy to like want to tell a grown woman what she is and not doing and all. Like I don't even have, I've never had that type of energy. I think I took care of a lot of this shit early just by choosing a woman who didn't have these interests. Right. But I do think it's a natural, gradual maturation process that a woman doesn't most women won't want to go on trips, pleasure trip. Like, well, let, let's talk about what this actually is. This is a pleasure trip without their significant other. What are you doing on a pleasure trip? All of you, you can bring, they, they have these exact trips for couples. We all done it. We all been to Miami, have we not? Mm -hmm. I can tell you what the fuck I was doing out there when I was single. Breaking spines in that mother, okay? There's nothing really else to be doing out there. So now that I'm now that I'm married, I can never say, "Hey, I'm going such and such." Yeah, me and the boys gonna have a good. No, I'm usually like, "Hey, who all going?" They this be good, cool to get another group of our married friends to go. It's a natural, gradual process. I don't even think about going anywhere. Okay, what do you have? then then I I have a question for 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 the men here. Which one of y'all want to go to the Essence Music Festival? Oh, yeah, I want to go. I haven't. I wouldn't mind going to that, actually. 
Well, so, I've been, and let me tell you, I ain't going back. <laughs> also, which which one of you men have have been to the uh, 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 African women? Uh, shit, it's another music festival that happens in Charlotte. Have any of you ever been? Do you do you really want to go? No, I don't. Even you see what I'm saying? So, so you would rob your your woman of that experience because you don't want to go. She wants to go with a group of her friends. That's, but you got to go now. So you so you're making it where you have to go. That's crazy to me. Hey, Mike. So when you're gonna introduce the new people to the path? Oh, you know what? You know what? My bad. My bad. It's the baby. You know, I'm feeling it's slighted. Man. Pain I'm feeling it. slighted and shit. Well, yeah. Mike, it's gonna be trouble. You having two long-winded motherfuckers go back to back. Right now, you know, you guys gotta, you know, first of all, y'all gotta stop that because my shit, I time myself, man. These guys got me beat all the goddamn time. Let me, all let me right, nah, nah, nah. let's get pain in there. Let, no, real quick, you know. So, uh, first of all, I should get some leeway since I'm new. <laughs> you know, indeed, but anyway, indeed. on this topic, Negro ain't nothing know. about you new. Well, yes, oh, that's, that's true, too. We got on a shirt that says I'm retired. AP, a, yes, exactly. AP, listen. You're more retread than you. You're a goddamn retread. I get my little two minutes of fame, goddamn it. Retro. You know what I'm saying? Listen, AP, <laughs> we got to stop equating men and women the same. We just got to stop doing that. We're not the same. And the impacts of what we do are not the same. Now, I don't expect a man to go out cheating on his wife when he goes to these trips. If I wanted to go to the Essence Fair, I'd bring my wife with me. You know, that's that's because we're married now, right? But if your woman is wants to go on pleasure trips without you, it, it does depend on who she's going with. Is she going with some cousins, a sister or something? You still have a, a raised eyebrow, but it'll be hard-pressed for you to say no, okay? You, you would be. If she's going with a whole bunch of single, you know, 304s, man, she can't go. Because they're gonna start drinking, you know, and she's and, and listen, I, I don't know about you fucking guys, but my wife has never stopped being a woman, right? So, you know, even after all these years, she's still a woman. You know, temptation is one of the kind of things that get everybody in trouble. Yeah. Right. So I don't think as much as she used to get hit on, you know, it had to be me to keep her from, you know, falling on the side. So it's something you don't worry about. She got a girl, she got a, she's older now. And she goes on a trip with her girlfriend to see the leaves turn brown and all this shit. I don't, I don't mind that. If she goes out, if she, my wife is out there fucking around in the sixties like that, I'm saying, you know what? I, I might want to pat her on the back. You know, because when she comes back home, she's always happy. And so, okay, I'll take advantage of that. I'm only joking. But the truth of the matter is, at some point in your life, you stop worrying about the, the little things. But when that's Brian Young, they ain't going on no goddamn girls trips without me, you know. So anyway, so I mean, it's just we make this shit real complicated. But it's still up to the individual marriage, the individual relationship, and, and it has nothing to do with how much you trust your wife or how much she trusts you, because when she's out of your purview. Well, no, when she's out of your purview, you have absolutely no control on what she does, just like she doesn't have no control on what you do. And that, and that's as simple as that. I'm, I'm done. You, right, Miles. you missed what I said at the beginning. Since the old the, lady dried up, now you don't give a shit. you like, go ahead and do what you want to do. But when that's she a very like, I love you. Like, like I love you, honey. Like, like a you missed what I said at the very beginning. Uh, yeah, I at did. The, I'm sorry. At the very beginning, I said, I learned the friends. I know the friends. I, I know who they are. I know who she's going with. So for me, if it's already a, a friend that, that, I, that I distrust, she knew that before she brought it to me because we've had a discussion about that friend. Gotcha. We've already had talks about these people. So if it's family, I already know the family. I made it a point to meet the entire family. These are things that's incumbent upon us when we're vetting a woman. So if if it's something that if it's let's most most of her friends now are, are married except for the one hothead bitch I can't fucking stand. But <laughs> Uh, 
No, she wouldn't. Like it would be. She already knows. She wouldn't even ask. I hear you. I, I mean, I'm hearing you. So, I, I so mean. those the boundaries have already been set. That, no, but that's, hey, why hey, hey, that's why I don't. That's why I don't understand hey, this. But this hey, no, you can't. Hey, you can't go without me. That's crazy. No, so, hey, Please hey, fucking hey, leave my house. Hey, AP, can I just say this before you go on? Because nobody could disagree with what you're saying. But boundaries are all, you know, boundaries do get set and people do overstep the boundaries. It's a matter of temptation and where their heads are at at the time. So you could think that you're on, on fine footing or she could think she's on fine footing with you. It just depends on the temptation. The deal is, I'm not a big biblical guy, but temptation has a lot to do with sin. It has a lot to do with sin because. I, you know, I'm a Catholic, right? They used to say the sin is in the temptation. Yeah. You know, you know. So, so the point is, is you got to minimize the temptation. That's it. And but you can't do it for everybody. You can't do it a hundred percent. So there's got to be trust there. So I can dig what you're saying, but all your vetting can only get you to a certain risk reduction. It doesn't. It doesn't bring that shit to zero. It just doesn't. So so that's true, but right. when I'm in D when I travel to DC and I'm gone for three days, hey. like it's the same, it's the same, the same thing to me. Yes, that's, I hear you. I don't disagree. That's the reality. I conversation before you marry these heifers, man. See, that, that, that's that, that's what needs to be had. The conversation needs to be had part too much. I'm running scenarios, conversations. Uh, I'm I'm vetting friends. This friend is eliminated from the circle. Uh, yes, can't no longer hang out with this bitch. Cause she ain't right. uh, 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 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She can't come over to the house. We're not dealing with that. So all of these things I'm talking about, we I dealt with before I say I do. One part, we dealt with this before I say I do. Ain't no your money, no hideaway fund. Ain't none of that going on. It's our money. We bring it together. We're going on trips together. I'm not cool with the couple's trips. I don't have a problem with me not going on guy. If I'm going on guy trip, she go with me. If it's something the guy's going to do, she can stay in a hotel. It doesn't matter. And if, she, if it's something I don't want to go to, she already knows I don't like that type shit. She won't even ask. She'll miss out on it. I will find another uh, concert, event, or, or performer that we want to go see together. We're going to figure it out. We're not going to We're not gonna be sitting in the house like uh, uh, old people stuck like our pain I'm doing. I'm going to get out and uh, 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 I mean, Why you got to use me as an example, example God damn it. You know what I'm saying? No. Uh, uh, uh. I, I get out, man. We 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 hang out. We hang. No, I want to. I want to say something to what uh, Payne has said because that's where I'm at with it. That's where I'm at with it. That temptation. I don't do things because I realize my anatomy and my nature has not changed. On Hemp Show the other day, we were talking about. They were like, "For all you married dudes, how y'all stay committed to one woman?" Oh shit, nigga, don't go. It's like it's not like my my meat stopped working or I don't find other women attractive. <laughs> Like, I can't stand when people act like say stupid shit like, you only have eyes for one woman. Nigga, I got eyes. <laughs> I, I have eyes. Asses are still fat. And he still look juicy to me. That's okay? right. No All right. So, hey, that, hey Mike, that, can I say something to that when you finish just real quick before this brother right next to you, Miles, go? Let me just say real quick. Let's, let me just, I, I travel for my job all the time, all over the United States. I stayed in some of the best hotels. And, you know, if you're a married man, sometimes just knowing that you can get laid is enough. Without yeah, even doing it, right? So, you so you, you huh? just knowing that somebody's interested in you is enough, right? I mean, it's happened to me. I've been at the bar with all these travelers from all around the country. Some, some nice women, they talk to you, talk to them, you're drinking a little bit, but you don't succumb to the temptation. You go upstairs, you pack his, you pat yourself on the back. You know, I could have got some ass tonight, and you, but you don't do it, and that gives that's enough to stay faithful because you know you still got it. For me, another, I can't speak for every other man, but for me, over the years, what kept me faithful is to know that every so often, women would like to, women just used to like to touch me, right? I mean, that, that's I mean, too much of a temptation. No, you know, you know, but you know, but you 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 resist that. He said, "Well, you know, shit, man. You know, I I could I could have yeah, got laid, but pain, I didn't do pain, it." Pain, I'm a, pain, I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm gonna stop you right there Don't because I have Don't to stop myself from getting touched because then some shit might go down. 
Okay, so, <laughs> See, so you, that, yeah, so you, you gotta get used to that. All this type of shit, and I'm be like, hey, hey, you know, hey. Your you, are, oh, yeah. you already you said the, the sin is in that. the temptation. <laughs> you know, yeah. but if you could withstand well, temptation, you know, like Jesus, other, I'm, I'm, I'm the devil tempted him for the 40 days. And you over Shit, I'm 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 waiting. I'm taking my side and I'm going to the room. Don't touch me. Because you're coming too. You ever get tempted to mute your mic every once in a while? Shut up. Let's get my uh Miles in there, then we're gonna get E B D. The bit it's not even like just like them interacting with somebody in an intimate space. It's safety. I just not being in control of somebody. Not being in control of somebody when they're away, and if something does happen to them, that remorse you'll feel afterwards when it's something you could have prevented is going to be catastrophic for you. Dog, that is real. That is real. I it's, this is the this is the part that that I don't really like is that this whole independence narrative has also come with a lot of lack of vigilance on the women's part. Because, like, they move in ways that men would never move. They go down alleys men would never go down. Like, I got, man, I got my purse fuck stolen. Hold on. Like, I got my purse stolen. Well, nigga, why you fake. walk down there? Who the fuck would walk down there? <laughs> y'all being fake. This is so fake. Stop being fake. No, Cause no, cause y'all, no, no. When we on our way to work, you don't care. You don't care if this happens that, that on a job. Oh, you in, don't a, in the daytime. In the daytime. Yeah, you, they, not, you go to work in the daytime. Hold on, let me read this on Big Ann Eleven said ten dollars at pain. Wasn't you a stripper? You sure oh, was. Shit. They called him yeah. Jelly Bean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get uh, yeah. EBD in there. What's good, brother? Uh, yeah. What's good? It's it's. Hold uh, it down for a sec. I gotta get an ibuprofen in my hair. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yeah, first of all, salute to everybody, and and you know, it's just it's just good to see y'all again and be up here. Um, second, uh, when we're talking about, I mean, I I've got so much um experience in this. I've been you know twenty something, and then married, and then divorced, and then single again, and then now a different lifestyle now. But um, but we're talking about betting. So I mean, <laughs> here's what. Uh, yeah, what's what's up, Ikeni? Um, uh, but uh, when we're talking about betting. Uh, it's not a, a, a one year or two year, uh, type of thing. Right. Because I, I think I mentioned this earlier on, um, on some other panel, on some super chat, but, uh, what I said was what qualifies you for sex does not qualify you for a relationship. And what qualifies you for a relationship does not qualify you necessarily for marriage. Right. These are three different titles, three different roles, um, three different, uh, uh, statuses, uh, that a woman can achieve. Right. Um, either we're going to have sex with you, which is the probably the lowest level. There's the relationship, which means, OK, well, there's more, there's something to this more than sex. We actually vibe with each other. And there um, and therein lies you're in a you're in a, um, an interview position for this long term position, which is a wife. Right. A wife is going to be the highest position that a woman can achieve with a man. Uh, it means that she's won his trust, his respect and um, and um, and loyalty comes from that. So before uh, any um, contract is signed and before you walk down the aisle, you've already had, like uh, like Hink was saying, you've already had these conversations. You already had the what if scenarios of, hey, you know, do you, would you go on this trip or are we going on this trip together? Like all these things take years. They don't take months or days. They take, um, they take years. Um, the person that you should marry, and I, I say this often, the person that you should marry is, is usually someone that has been rocking with you for multiple years and is still rocking with you today. Either that or maybe you lost touch with them five years, 10 years later, um, you catch up with them. They were in a relationship, so were you. You come back around full circle and all of a sudden you're vibing again. You you have the same, uh, uh, the catch up uh, talk. Uh, you you uh, talk about what you want in the future. Hey, what do you want in the future? What do I want in the future? We're both more mature adults. That person is probably going to be the best suited to uh, kind of uh, they've already been vetted to an extent. Right. You, you already know what they know who you are. You know who they are. There's no second guessing. There is no what if you know how they move already because you've known them for so long and they've known you for so long as well. That's kind of the person you should marry. I'm not saying your quote unquote best friend, but someone who knows you inside and out. 
before you had that money, before you had that job, it was them, right? It was them that you can talk to and it was them that can talk to you. That's kind of the person that you probably should marry because it doesn't matter what their status is. They're still going to rock with you no matter what. And they're not going to be um, looking for some other option because if that were the case, they wouldn't marry you to begin with. So <clears throat> there's a whole lot of um, uh, vetting that goes through, uh, but it's it, it takes years. I don't think it takes uh, a, a date or two. A, a date is something else, right? But a marriage is something that lasts forever to the day you die. So that's a very serious commitment that a man has to make and has to be damn sure of before he even uh, thinks or considers about walking down that aisle and signing a piece of paper and um, and, and being a mister uh, to this woman for the rest of his life and beyond his life because he's not supposed to take care of her while he's alive. He's supposed to also take care of her when he dies. Insurance, um, uh, business, like all of these things are to consider. So, yeah, you better make sure that you know them. I, I don't know about the, I mean, maybe, uh, I mean, if it were me, a perfect world, the person I married, I, I knew since the sandbox or kindergarten or whatever, but that's not really the case. The, the point would be, you know them for so long and they know you. Yeah, they're, you're, you're totally secure and, and sure when you, when you take that leap. I, I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll land my plane there. All right. Okay. These super chats. Marriage policy sports says ten dollars says who is B eleven? Oh, big ant. No, I was not a stripper, but I did audition for a part in Magic Mike. I actually believe that shit. You've been retired for a minute. He was probably bored. My man Reese Anderson, what's going on, brother? Five dollars says, Mr. Payne, the example of why monogamous marriage for a man is a scam. Laugh out loud. He actually satisfied with just knowing he could sleep with another woman. You know what? In a way, I kind of respect it. The, I, I do respect it because I'm 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 I might even be going that way now. Every married I might even be going that way. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. The thought of how much trouble these women are it is it, it gives me pause to do a lot of stuff. Because you know how people will entice you to do stuff, and you like, damn, I could, I could, I could knock this off. I could hit, the, but the simple thought of all the trouble that they cause on purpose, it's like, ah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> so that that if is. He, if these guys think about it, man. That's just the way it is, man. I mean, I'm telling you, really think about it. It's enough. I, I'm thinking I was saying a good thing. I'm doing a public service by telling you guys out there who are married that sometimes just the thought that you still have it is enough. I feel you on that. All right, let's get into the main topic for tonight. The main topic is the impact of black dads. Now, I was on Instagram. Y'all know I peruse every once in a while. I came across a clip. Did I load that clip? I did. <laughs> load the clip. But, uh, yeah, the comments were, were very interesting to me. And uh, maybe some of y'all saw this clip. We're going to watch it. Then we're going to start. I actually want to get the woman's perspective first. So, do we're going to start with you. So, pay attention. What do y'all think about this? If a black dad shows up at the parent-teacher conference with the mom, oh, it's a wrap. Oh, it's a wrap. From that point on, the teacher is going to put so much respect on that student's name. Because these teachers... Most of them, not all of them, but most of these teachers expect that only the mom is involved in the kid's life and that the black dad is an absent dad. So the moment that the black dad shows up at the parent teacher conference, it's a wrap. Expect for your kid to be treated kindly. Expect for your kid to get extensions in their homework if they turn in things late. Expect for the teacher to put some respect on your kids' names, black parents, when the black dad shows up. Mm. Put some respect on the black me, dad's let, name. Let me say this something to Don't but... listen. I said, <laughs> what you got? You go. This dude don't listen. I'm just messing with you. Go on, bro. Go on, bro. All right. Diddy, what do you think about that? They don't care. They do not care. <laughs> At the end of the day, 
This is bigger than some black parrot. Oh, snap. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I was trying to turn you up. Go ahead, Didi, my bad. All right. This is something she's... This, this is delusional. Um, your children will still be played with and treated any kind or kind of way, even with your presence, even with being an active parent. Um, I'm somebody who works in the education system as well as a parent, and they still playing with my baby. <laughs> and her daddy comes to every single meeting, every single everything that there is. He's there at school weekly, and they still play in our faces. That does not mean that your child about to get no special treatment or anything like that. This system is not set up for your children to win. So they don't give a fuck about you or your kids. <laughs> so it, it's nice that you show up and, you know, cool. It, it holds people a little bit more accountable. But no, it, it, that don't mean your kids going to get no special treatment at all. All right. Ikan A. I know you were dying to let us know your thoughts, my man. You got no, it. no, no. I wasn't trying to let you guys know my thought. I was just wanted to say something that happened that happened today. Like uh, my daughter had to go to hospital because she couldn't poop really good because of lack of uh, you know little kids they they don't get hydrated like like they're supposed to be right. So. When I when my wife came into the hospital into the uh, um, uh, urgent care, you know, they were like, okay, they're not like you can tell that they were doing some like you know not too serious stuff. But once I showed up with the baby, everything changed. People start like I experienced that whenever I go somewhere with my wife, like hospital. Whenever the dad shows up, the fact that there is a man in that in that room. Everything changes. Everything changes. That lady is not telling lies. She's actually speaking the truth. Okay. All right. Who do we get on this? Kenny, let's get you in on it. Do black, is the impact of black dads, that's the topic. Do, do you think children get treated better when they know that a father is in the picture? I believe from experiences of me seeing it, yes, because now from that view, both parents are involved, but I am still iffy about the treatment because if you have a parent there, nonetheless, I feel they're going to give those the attention that they need to give them. I don't think it's reinforced that much more because you see the dad there, that's just an extra person to speak to and convey how your child is doing. I took her uh, her story as a positive and her trying to give us a view on what she saw as for a good thing. And she tried to frame it that way. So I didn't want, want to diminish. I didn't see anything diminishing about it, but as for the extra emphasis, um, I don't know the stats on that. And I believe it's just an extra person that they're looking at and talking to regarding the the affairs of their kids and how well they're doing educational wise. All right. Hey. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what type of education program she was in, but it, it makes a big difference. So I substitute teacher for five years and they definitely treated the teachers treated uh the kids, uh especially little black boys. Let me say this about the little black boys. They always gonna treat them little black boys bad. They just trying to do certain things, say certain things, so they can trigger them to get them upset, to, so they can get that e, uh, EAP. They want them programs. Yeah, not the EAP. I'm sorry, the uh, IEP. IEP. They want them programs because it's more money. So now it goes from fifteen hundred dollars a head. Now they're going for about twenty five hundred dollars a head for for kid with with the IEP owner. So that's a lot of times is what they do with these kids. Uh, but they do treat them kids differently when you see a father. I, I sit there and experience that. I watched him. How this white teacher all of a sudden she changed the tune when a, when a man came to the room. Because why he was more than just vigilant. He made his presence known. He didn't just come up there just on parent teacher conference. He was there on a regular basis. And so that's what you got to do. That's what you should do for your kids. You shouldn't just come up there when 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 your kids get in trouble or when you know it's or when they have you know, some type of war ceremony. No, you need to be on top of that. 
as a parent, that's your job. Why? Why aren't you going to talk about it? It shouldn't be when you you, know, you get the progress report and all of a sudden your the GPA is down to 2.5 when it was at 3.0 or 4.0. No, you should be in there before then. Hopefully you have some type of good interaction relationship with your teachers that y'all know each other on a first name basis. When you got the phone number, anything goes wrong, you call me. Let me know what's going on. Junior not doing right? Okay, I'll come out and handle Junior, but let me handle it. Don't get upset when I pull Junior into the kid's bathroom and whoop his ass and hear him crying. Don't say nothing. Allow me to deal with it. And then Junior won't be doing this no more. Because he acted fool on, on, on spot. I'm going to correct him on spot. I don't care how embarrassed he may feel after it's all said and done. Yeah, let him know. You got to act a father. He don't play that bullshit. I, I can't help these other little bastards that ain't around. Fuck them. They not my responsibility. My responsibility mm -hmm. is Junior. So, yeah, you should be on top of that. And you have a man come out. They will act different. Oh, oh. There go Hink's father. There go little Hink's father. Y'all see him, man. I, I don't. I can't tell you how many times I heard to her send them kids. We whisper saying, "Is it your daddy? Is it your daddy?" Because they know they don't play. They could get over on the woman's emotions. No, Junior ain't like like this. Knowing your kid's bad as hell, but you don't think Junior doing that? Oh no, no, Junior would never do that. He don't do his shit at home. That's because he comes to school and acts a goddamn fool. Mm. I'll get there, Mike. Let me say this. Let me get on this. Let me get on this. Somebody mentioned IEPs. I don't think we can get around this being true. And here's why. When the father is involved in a child's life, the chances that they're going to ever be diagnosed with ADHD drop significantly. The school don't even play around. $6,000. Who, who was that? But yeah, it drops significantly. Because you think about it, it's it's young black boys, somebody said it, it's young black boys that are the easiest to target with that diagnosis. The teacher can't get him to sit still, but if I believe that if they know, if it's a mom, and, and this is where the disconnect is, this is why I think that they do treat boys with fathers better, or at least they can't write them off as easy. That's what I think it is. They know they can't just do whatever because he's going to show up. If you try to have an IEP meeting on a young boy just because he won't sit still for eight hours, the dad's coming and he's not having that shit. What I've noticed with teachers and moms more often is that the teacher is tired of communicating with mom. And I think that's natural. I do not think moms can listen to criticism about their children without trying to blame the teacher. That, that's what I think. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's not that moms are bad. It's not. It's that once you hear something adverse about your baby, you see red. Well, what is the school doing? Blah, blah, blah. Literally, I will listen to the whole thing because she could actually be telling the truth and we need to address that in the house. It could be our problem. Right. I'm not just going to throw it back in her face and she not doing something. Right. So I just think dads naturally are easier to talk to and we accept criticism on behalf of our child and family better than the moms do it's nothing against mom y'all y'all protect your children at all costs and there's a time and a place for that but it's not always in the classroom sometimes we need to hear what's wrong with the kid and we need to address that in the in the home setting but that's what yeah. i think oh mike so that's that's definitely true there's just no doubt about it and you know what? It's a natural thing. I just, just like you said, women just naturally are overprotective, and sometimes they, there's a time and place for that, but you can't tell them when it is. Uh, so they do at the wrong time, and that's every single woman I know. You tell them anything about their kids, at some point before they get the rational mind in place, they always lean to saying for protection of the kids, even when they're wrong, even to the kids' detriment. There's a real mother who who understands, like, well, you know what? Yeah, my kid might be wrong. But men, you know, they'll try to listen to it rationally and say, listen, my kid is uh, being treated fairly, so I'll take the criticism. But a man will also tell people that maybe you overstepped with my kid, you know, so I'm not going to accept just any criticism. So, yeah. but, but men are much more rational when it comes to the children that way. There's just no doubt. I mean, the CDC says, you know, being a, a dad, an involved dad is a good thing for a kid. Everybody knows it. So anyway, so yeah, but I agree with the lady in the damn video. You know, it's kind of rare. I mean, it's good to see a woman say something rational and goddamn 
TikTok or whatever the hell she was for once in a while. So I appreciate that when I see it. All right. Oh, Miles Bounce. All right, EBD, what you got? Yeah, I, I think we've talked about this like maybe last year, 2023. And um, what she said is it holds true and holds holds water only to an extent because if um, – if it's Flavor Flav that's showing up at the at the parent teacher kind of conference, that's I don't think that holds too true. Yeah, or boy. If, yeah, boy. But uh, yeah, but you know yeah, but you know, but you know what I'm that. saying. Like if it's if it's like if it's like you know like like Pookie or somebody that comes straight out the wire that's at the parent. I don't think that's because they got enough free time, right? Um, I, I don't think that holds holds true, right? Not not always. But I I I, I will say this. I think we came to the conclusion last time we were talking that if men took over education, you would see this country and its job and its uh, um, and its uh, uh, culture improve significantly because the fights that happen, the the rowdiness that happens, the disrespect that happens <laughs> happens so early. And if it's just women addressing this issue, and and even if you think about it. Uh, 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 a student's disruptive in class and a teacher can't handle them, who they go get? The male principal, the male somebody that goes in there and enforces uh, rules and policies and discipline and consequences. They say, even if you're a teacher, you still have to lean toward a male somewhere in order to instill that kind of discipline. If men were teaching, how many people would be acting up in class? You don't act up. If you think about your school, your school experience, there's that one male teacher you don't F with. You may be able to screw off in other classes that are women led, but that one male teacher, you don't, you don't, all of a sudden you have that kind of decorum where it's like, maybe I need to listen and pay attention because Mr. Mr. Hammond and having it, right? So we've grown up with this in school, but if this was your school experience that you were uh, raised with nothing but education, with came along with discipline and respect, how many fights would actually happen in school if they're just nothing but grown men around watching you all the time? You can't get away with the crap that these children do and say when there's men around because they'll put a they'll put a pin in that real quick. They'll end it real quick. The um, men are always on the road to improvement, meaning we can take the criticism and be like, OK, well, this is where I'm effing up and this is where I need to do better. And it's the same thing with children, too. But uh, I think what we're looking at for in the future on how we're going to be more uh, involved with uh, parent um, uh, teacher conferences and things like that is if I'm working from home or if I'm working from an office, my I have a Teams, Microsoft Teams, and it has all my meetings scheduled per day. And I think what's going to happen is more men are going to step up, share their schedule and be like, look, these are my meetings. But if he's got a problem or if he's got something, you call me or you text me or you uh, send some kind of message and it's no longer going to be, well, after school, he's going to hear about it. It's going to be in real time. Hey, I'm messaging your daddy right now on, on, the, on, on my computer. You want to F up right now. I'll tell your father right now and let him deal with you in real time. And I think that's where we're kind of headed. So I, I think we're going to get more involved in education. Um, it'd be greater if we took it over, um, only because of those things I said about discipline and respect. Um, if you're going to instill these children with that, think about the kind of productive adults they're going to be. If they're not going to slip up in school, in their education, how are they going to slip up on their job when they're adults? That's not going to happen. They're going to be more productive. They're going to be more respectful. And maybe, may possibly, they'll enter into better, longer lasting relationships. Mm. Yes, sir. So story time. When I was a young old instructor years ago, um, I had to shadow. Oh, they love for everybody that works. You know, it's hard to get a full time teaching gig in higher education. So you're going to work part time and you're going to work a split. So if they teach classes all day, you I was there in the morning and then I had to leave in the afternoon, come back in the evening and teach a class. Right. So the night crew that taught. It was two women. And I was there for about two weeks and I noticed they kept calling each other to tell me to come sit in the other person's class. 
And I thought they wanted me to do a lecture. I thought they wanted me to do, you know, and they just had me sit there. And then one day I was just like, all right, this is silly. What the hell y'all got me swapping in between classes for sitting here if y'all not going to have me do nothing? He said, these students don't act up when you sit in here. They just, they don't say nothing. These are grown people, by the way. Not These are 18 and up, not even children. They're like, for some reason, every time you just sitting right here, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's women. The, the, the programs are like 90% women. Yeah, they just all of a sudden they don't they don't got slick shit to say no. She, she when we sent the students on break, she was like, all of a sudden everybody just got their pencils up, and, and I I sat there and didn't say a word. All of a sudden he she was like, they just know that everybody want to be on their best behavior, and I think it's just a natural effect that men have. You know, I always refer to that school in Louisiana that just. Had the dads, when they were getting off work, come stand in the hallway, and there were no more fights in the school. The, their own kids, the kids that weren't there, they, they started uh, interviewing them. It was like, well, I just saw them, and I figured I could go to class. <laughs> I just, I ain't know what they were there for. I ain't want, you know, I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? I ain't want to do nothing wrong. But that's just what men represent. Order, discipline, <clears throat> anything. When I've seen um, young kids do it. I see it all the time indirectly where like maybe a dad went to park the car. So the kids are in the restaurant cutting up in the lobby. They, they're not noticing that the dad just walked up behind them. They turn and see him. And now they sit their ass down real quick. Right. You see, you see all these little subtle cues. Mike, that children I just a question real quick, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So you're on a micro level. What do you think happens to society when we see women as the fire chief over 13,000 men? or the president, or uh, or mayor, if that shit happens at the micro level in a classroom, what kind of order do you think at the higher level when we ask these women to do these jobs where they have no fucking business doing? So, so I mean, so, so you know, it, it, has to, it has to be extrapolated. It's just not at the local level. Yeah. You know, they have this woman who's a fire chief in New York Commissioner, over 13, they're hunting down firemen because they booed a chick in New York City, you know, so they could discipline them and embarrass them. They would never, man would never ask them to hunt down men because he got booed. So our society is deteriorating because we have people in the wrong positions. You know, it's as simple as that. And it sounds sexist, yeah. I don't give a shit. If Kamala <laughs> Harris becomes president, we might as well just go ahead and jump in the goddamn sea, okay? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, yeah, for optics' sake, I mean, just to be honest, the the issue is that the optics of it, people people aren't appreciating it at all. Um, it, and, 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 yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I I honestly don't know how we went from 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 the praising of involved fathers to to bashing on women, that's nuts to me. But I want to get to, I want to touch on one point that uh, EBD said that that really bothered me a little bit. We need to praise fathers, whether whether they are the, they aren't the necessarily the the character that we would want our sons to become, but the fact that you have Pookie, Ray Ray, and Pimp involved. Why? Why would we bash that dude? He's he's trying. He's trying. So so let's not diminish what he's attempting to do. Second, in regards to the video, I don't think that the kids get preferential treatment. I think they get a different expectation. I think what happens more times than not, it is. Bobby, don't make me call your daddy. Yep. That Bobby, the next time something goes on, I'm 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 going to notify your father. When they know that the man is involved, that's that's what happens. But that's a different expectation. That's what I just said. I I said it's not preferential. It's a different expectation. Uh, okay, I, got I got you. I got you. I'm sorry. So I, I I can't say that they're necessarily treated better, but they do have a higher expectation of that kid when they know that the daddy is involved, when they, when they see dad 
come to every single uh, uh, PTA meeting. Hell, when they see uh, Dad involved in the uh, in the, the the booster club, they there's a very different expectation when it comes to that that particular child. And I think that's probably what happens more times than not. And then Ikene made made a very valid point when a man shows up in the picture. Things change. Things look different. He he talked about when he walked in with the baby. They start the heaven and earth started moving, and that's typically what does happen when because the man is men were typically no nonsense. We expect results. Uh, so when we when we come when we show up, it is okay. I can't BS this guy. Let's let's go ahead and, and move the mountain to get things done. And I, I and I think as a whole, um, kind of what our pain was talking about with without bashing women, if more men were in some of these positions, I think society as a whole would would get stronger. Yes. Okay, well, so I'll land it right I there. take numbers with the word bashing. We okay. could we could criticize uh, women okay. without saying we're bashing them. Uh, you know, okay. that's the bottom line. Uh, Nobody. Man, you just you just said that the that, that we're gonna crash into the ocean if if Kamala Harris. I don't disagree necessarily, but if Kamala Harris becomes president, <laughs> but that's less but that's less about her as a woman. But I one second, you. I hear you, man. I hear you. I hear you. Okay, there's I a lot of nuggets that both your brothers put out. But then there's the dynamic of the the question that was posed at the beginning of this panel, the 50-50 and the man being the bread, the sole breadwinner. Now, when your father would have to come to school with your mother, you knew it was a problem. Thanks. That's how I grew up. So that man would mostly be working, trying to keep a roof over your head and it would be a problem when your dad came there. So us to make this like, okay, this is something that's going to change the world. Your dad, if he's that man, you better do good in school because you don't want me to come here. Yeah. That's what I, that's the sentiment that, that I had. That's a fact. In, that's a fact. So I, there's a lot of gems that were put on the table regarding this, but he was the rod when he had to come to school. So I'm I'm just like I see I see how the we're, we're kind of straying off the point. She's saying something that we once knew that was that was like a norm, like uh, that was like hit that emergency button. Your mom could okay, your son needs to go do this, your daughter needs to do this better. They're doing bad here and here. Daddy comes home from work. Okay, what happened with that thing? You get that explanation. Okay, you better do better. The ones that need the spanking get spanking. So I'm I'm trying to figure out how far we got off of this. Well, not know. all fathers are the same, right? I mean, you can go when you go to the school. In my example that I was pointing earlier, wasn't bashing um, um, men at all or, or women. What I'm saying is that what she said in the video holds true. But it doesn't hold true for everybody. Exactly. Um, if if dad it. if dad if dad over here and has this has this um if the teacher has a negative perception of dad, then that doesn't hold true. I yeah. mean that's 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 not on me just saying it. That's just reality. If if dad's a VP a uh, vice president somewhere, I would expect the teacher to 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 treat that child with some level of respect and decorum. Other all other students because the dad is this person. So it's not it's not just me saying it. It's just reality. And what she said holds true here, here, and here. Not everywhere. That's my point. It doesn't yeah, bash I'm anybody. In agreement. I'm in agreement with a good. No, no I know, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to. There's another point. thing that uh, one of the brothers on the panel brought up when the uh, had the fathers come into the school and then everybody act right. That was the ride. Yeah. That was the ride. So it, it's it doesn't make uh, inspire the teacher to do their job any better. That's their job. If they see a something that they need to do as for expressing it and yeah. parents being there, um, 
I think they try to do their jobs, most teachers, and I'm being optimistic to the best of their abilities. So I don't see the uh, the great swing just by having the other parent there. I see it if we take over the school. I, I think that if men flooded the school from kindergarten to uh, high school, you would see the dynamics of the, the behavior of children improve. Now, I'm not saying overnight. I'm not saying tomorrow. But what I'm saying is all of the effery that they're used to being able to do on a daily basis behind daddy's back, if he's, if he, if he's aware now and alert and has the email and has the teams that, you know, we're more integrated now. You know, you can do everything by, you know, you just need to log in, right? Um, if I'm aware, if I'm hyper aware, the the behavior, it's like, I, I don't even want that smoke because he will know. And I can know either here from Texas or Louisiana or out on the road or out on my flight. I can know anywhere now, right? I don't have to go to the school. I am in the school with my phone. So now it's... uh. Um, but uh, but what we were speaking to earlier, the physical, what Trigger Mike was speaking to earlier, the physical presence is everything. If fathers flooded the school after work or between the workout or whatever, whatever it is, right? If we started flooding the school, just our presence changes the whole dynamic. That, that's yeah. that's my overall point. You you know what you just so let me give some credence to what EBD is talking about. Cause it's it's not even kids, man. It's not even just kids. I've only ever taught adults. I've never taught K through twelve. I got grown women to give me their cell phone before, when they walked into the classroom and they couldn't get it back to break, and then they had to give it back to me upon entrance from break. That is, and and I started it. Then every other night instructor started that. They gave you their phone. They, I, I had to order this little, you know, it was a shoe rack, but you know, the little plastic one looked like little cubby holes. So I they put it like, what the hell is this for? This is not pencils or markers. I said, I'm I'm gonna take their phones. I'm lecturing. The same people that are failing my tests are talking about, well, I'm not listening to the lecture. The, you in your phone the whole damn time. So since I'm getting graded on how many people pass these tests. I'm taking your phone so you can pay attention to my damn lecture, right? Not one protest. You, they'd be like, we've been trying to do that for you. Not one protest when I implemented that. Not one. So it's it's almost as if the representation of, of, of a man and what we want done, the way we talk about submission, it's just natural. It's natural for those girls to be like, all right, damn, well, here. Here's my phone. They're not going to argue with me. They're not really going to push back as much as they would on the female instructors. They're not going to ask why. They just gave me their phone, bro. They it wouldn't have been me. me. You damn, Didi. We're not even going to go there. You would have given me that <clears> damn phone. But, or, or, or you know what? Or you would have got the hell out of my class. <laughs> you know I walked out. Good. I'd have been you like, I walk out. Now get out of my class. You I, know I, I walk that. out. Yeah, I had to do that. Matter of fact, if I paid for that yeah. class, I'm going to sit right there with my phone. Didi, you know when's what it the is? Last time? When's the last you know time you, you watched Color Purple? Purple? I went on my birthday on Christmas. Yeah. One of seven people saw it. You, you don't realize how good you got it. For real, for real. Let me tell y'all, man, but in, in the school system, I think that's that's really all it is. Now, I can make a direct correlation, okay, between when men started leaving education and when boys started failing in school mm. at high numbers. Because you know those meetings that they have after school, lesson planning and all that type of stuff. Men would naturally understand that boys cannot sit down for eight hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> we would naturally, and this is not, like I said, this is not anything against the women. They're women. They are going to lesson plan, game plan, create activities based on what they can do. I know the boys aren't going to sit down for no eight goddamn hours. So if I'm going to teach math fundamentals, I'm going to do it outside. We're going to run one lap. Everybody's going to pick up a stone. 
You see what I'm saying? Run around, expel some energy, and put it down over there, run, shuttle run back, and tell me how many stones you got left. That's how I would teach math. Because cause I know I don't want to sit still for eight fucking hours. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So we you are delusional. You are so out of touch, Mike. Get, get Mike, out of here. You are so out of touch. I'm going to tell, tell me you what I you said. Are very, right. You are very much out of touch. Tell me as what I said. District, as a district, we are required to even, they have this math program. We're required to put them up there for 20 minutes on a computer sitting down. You're required to put them up there for 20 minutes a day. Then you're required to put them up there on another math program for 15 minutes a day. You're required to do these small groups every day. You cannot get all of this stuff that you're thinking that you can get done and then prepare them for SOLs like you think you can. It's definitely not like that. <laughs> you need to go volunteer at oh. school. For you, you to get a you better what understanding. Was, hold on, hold on. You missed what <laughs> I said. Hey guys, let me show you the cowboy tr training ground. The cowboy training ground, guys. He, he can just be bumped. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Hey, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Didi, you missed what I said. I said if the if if you men were back in education, we see it. Yes, we see it. Ikine. We're back yeah, in education. The education would look a lot different. That's what we're saying. That somebody wrote those those plans. The heads of the, the Department of Education, education is, yes, is the a modern male dominated education industry. system. The modern education system was written without thought of who what people could succeed in it. That's why you know boys suffer. Now, true. now no Mike, child left behind true. was that's championed not, by me. Mike. I think it's more insidious than that. It's more insidious. I mean, you think that all of these psychologists that are women and all that kind of stuff don't understand that boys and girls don't behave the same? They, they do. do know that. They don't give a shit. That, or the plan really is to break the boys. I mean, that I, I think it's more insidious than just overlooking how boys, young boys act. I think they want to break them. And because once you I break them young, them. It's, it's, it's easier to break when you break them young. You could control them better when they're older. Uh, pain. So, so that's you how have I to be that. very careful with making your own statements on people who are clinically and certifiedly trained to do their jobs. I think that's somewhat irresponsible. How is that irresponsible, that. though, Ken? You're just, you, just, you just made a statement that they did uh, adolescent buck breaking. Yeah, you, I think so. I think boys are okay, being that's, damaged. That's why they're putting them on drugs. In okay. greater numbers. So that's what mm. you believe. Yes. That's, that's what I said. That's what I believe. So, so well, Kenny, Kenny, I, Kenny, Kenny, ADHD. Oh, wait, wait, wait. ADD, ADHD were not a thing back in the 80s. I know. But 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 but, but when I'm but so when uh, so to our pain's point, when we're talking about psychology, what is their method of, of healing or or moving forward? Is it you need to change your behavior or do we or you do do you just need to take this pill? Okay, here's the thing. You can't paint that whole industry with that same brush. Well, no. You, you could sit down. So that's what I say. Be responsible for right. what you say instead of saying the majority, which you okay. should not say. That's big pharma. Big pharma giving you <clears throat> prerequisites of how you treat stuff. And then other clinical people saying, that's not the way I will go with this and sticking to it. You understand? Yeah. So we have to be very careful with that, saying that that's the industry. Well, 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 we're not saying that the whole thing's a scam. We're not saying that the whole thing's a scam. Let me ask you a question. Do we have an epidemic with more boys getting drugs younger or not? Absolutely. That, I mean, you know, if we have that issue, then I, I can I can categorically say that I believe that's what's going on. Okay. It's you know what I mean? Say. So if it doesn't happen in a particular school, that's fine. You ask but, the question, you know, if, right? If, if, if the kids are being, if the boys are being treated differently, or they're trying to make them treat, uh, listen, we I'm have saying, a whole. Did you ask a question? Or you going I'm going on a monologue. There's a whole. The question. Let him let him answer the question. Um. um. So to answer okay. your question before you continue your monologue, uh. I am not sure. I've read things, but I have not seen the stats. But. How I offered it is for us to be very careful because we have to be responsible for what we say regarding that. Okay, so yeah, you're right. If I was pointing out an individual teacher or school, I would agree with you. 
I'm saying in general, I think that there is a push in general in our society to equivocate mm -hmm. men and girls and boys that we are the same. It's mm -hmm. happening at every level. And, mm -hmm. and, and so when they do that to children, they got to break the boys so they could be docile like girls. Yep. So, so, so I, I'm just saying, maybe that's because they have just too many female teachers. I don't know, but I don't, but by saying it's just an accident, I don't buy that. Right. I just don't. And so, which so, is more, of a, know, which is more of a reason for, for men and fathers to be involved. I agree. I agree. That, 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 I think that is the, the, the big, the big difference, right? So I don't, I, I don't, I won't say that it was, that it was insidious from, from a school standpoint. I think the insidious part came from the breaking up of the, the home. Once you're able to break up a home, then all of these other elements can, can fall in line to, to help the community itself broken. I agree. Um, so I, I, I think we as elders or our generation, we need to continue to push the younger generation, hey, as, as you make kids, men be in the home. Don't make a kid with a woman that you don't plan on building a home with. It, 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 it is those things, I think, that will help reshape the direction that we're going. Just an opinion of mine. Uh, I need to lay it down because my ass is old also. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty quick. I'm gonna but uh, Trigger Mike, I appreciate you having me up and I'll, I'll listen until I pass out. All right. <laughs> I'm in agreement with what yeah. you guys, EBD and Payne said to a point. I've read what, what is being pushed. I know what Big Pharma is trying to do. You know, it's better to have a uh, people strung out on drugs rather than cure them of certain things and then put drugs on people under designations. There's this thing, you know, I'm half and half with Dr. Umar Johnson, but he's pointed out things that I've researched that are solid regarding them wishing to, to, to pretty much uh, have kids hooked on these medications when they need not to. And there are other alternative uh, methods as for teaching them. So, these things being introduced, I am not snubbing my nose to it. I just want yeah. us to be careful. Uh, no, how we let, let, let me let me actually give you. Hold on, y'all. Let me give y'all some. Um, so I don't. I don't even like saying I don't agree. People are usually given like Dr. Umar because he's actually you know uh, isn't he a child psychologist, school psychologist? He's something. Yeah. So yeah. So he has several he'll, licenses. he'll tell you I a lot of facts. feel about him. He has several licenses. He'll yeah. tell you a lot of facts, and then when it relates to the black community, he sprinkles a lot of his opinion of what he thinks is happening. Right. right. But let me tell you somewhere I think we agreed one hundred percent, and let me give you my spiel on this. He talks about the over diagnosis of black boys with ADHD. But he also did something he normally doesn't do. He spoke the truth about who's actually in cahoots to make this trend happen. And it's not a blame thing. He said there is an overworked and tired mom in conjunction with a frustrated teacher that are causing this epidemic. That is what's causing it. The boy is just being a boy. He's five years old. He can't sit still. He's up. Like right now, my son is doing this dumb thing where he's like, Dah! like, I, you see what I'm saying? Like it just random out of nowhere. I'm like, should I get this boy? Then I'm like, I was doing stupid shit like that probably till I was 13. He just randomly will jump up and do some kind of superhero move or something. Right. Randomly. But that's just being a boy. That's a five year old boy being a boy. He's imitating moves and Paw Patrol. Fire, fire up like the stupid sh shit like that at random the floor and is lava that is going to set a teacher off like sit down sit down i told you stop doing that so a the the mom is upset and tired because she can't get him to sit still at home the teacher is frustrated because she can't get him to sit still in school and now they basically team up to get a little bit of respite from this boy and that's where farmer comes in. It's that group together that accidentally 
because they need some relief from this boy who's just being a boy, it's that team that has had black boys in such a bind for so long. Because the father is usually not there to protest and be like, okay, if he's that, you know what I mean? Because really, that shit ain't never happening to me. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to bust that door wide open like, I'll, I'll come sit in the damn school and do my work here before you give my child a damn pill, right? So they are just trying to find some relief from what they believe is abnormal behavior because they don't exhibit that type of behavior. That's what they So let me say this to you, Mike. The father doesn't have to be an absentee father either. He just doesn't have to be in the house. He could be very involved, but at the moment they make that decision, he won't, he won't be there. Half of being a parent is serendipity by just being there at the right time. Yeah. That's why you need to be in the house all the time with your kids. So even if you're a, a, a good, dutiful father, but you're separated from a woman who has custody, she's making decisions where you're not there, even if you're involved. Right. So 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 that's that's what I'm saying. So, yeah, the fathers need to be in the house. But again, just like before AP left, we need to start to find a way to bring families back together again. And I, 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 I really don't see a path forward. No, I, I think the path forward is beyond, beyond the programming of social media and where we are right now. I think that path forward is broken. It's just, I think, and it's destroyed almost forever. I think, I think the path forward is looking backwards at what works and what doesn't. Um, I, I think that uh, they never should have gotten rid of recess and they never should have gotten rid of uh, physical education. They never should have gotten rid of a whole lot of things that uh, right now we're dealing with obesity, we're dealing with yeah. ignorance, reading level, we're dealing with uh, harassment, we're dealing with bullying, we're dealing with right. online social media bullying, all this stuff because these oh. children can't run outside and play and express themselves the way that they were supposed to in the way that we did. So I will say this, when you said you don't see a pathway forward, you kind of went through the pathway before you made that statement. The pathway is always going to be family in our traditional norms. This is what happens when you run away from traditional norms. All right. Tradition. We're living a new time. I keep telling y'all the more things change, the more they stay the same. This has all happened before. Society has strayed away from traditional norms. We've suffered the consequences of it. And then we just go right back to what works. This is the way it's always going to happen. We, what we are suffering from is a the degradation of the single family model. And especially if the parents break up, the single parent model damn sure don't work. All right. We don't have a Mima, a grandma living in the crib no more. That's going to get off with them kids when they get off the bus, take them straight to the park uh, uh, after they've done their homework to play till they are tired. Right. To check their homework, make sure it was done correctly. Then mom and dad might come home. They eat dinner. Whoop -de -whoop. We don't have that system. Every time I take my kid to the park over there on the Indian side, that's exactly what you see. A group, not one, a group of grandmothers supervising the children while they wait on mom and dad to come home from work. Sometimes you see mom out there too. And the, and the reason you'll know daddy's home, if you just stay like a, just stay until about 6 p.m., you'll see him kind of come out. He got his uh, shirt unbuttoned from work, letting everybody know he there. Hey, let's go in the crib. Let's eat. whoop de whoop They have a multi-family system. Somebody is always available to interact, to redirect, to take them somewhere, to work with the children, do your homework, do your lessons, go to karate. They, 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 there's somebody always available to supervise these children and make sure they're on a straight and narrow. What do they need? So that is what we are suffering from because we're all individuals. We're either an individual family with no help or an individual parent who don't even have time to get their work done in the private sector, much less supervise their kid 24 hours a day. The kid is developing habits. They never saw them, so they don't know how to redirect them. I think most kids now that go to school most of the day hide who they are from their parents. I get to be my alter ego when I'm in school and I'll just go home and I'll chill, fall asleep. Then I get to be this person when I come back home. The parent won't catch that behavior for years. But but uh, y'all got it, man. Any uh, anybody got some thoughts on this before we. Uh... Oh, beans. What's going on? 
Chilling, man. What's good? Chilling, man. So we're talking about the impact of black dads. Did you catch that video that I played earlier? No. Nah. It was about a woman saying that, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to play it again. Hold on. I'm going to just play a little clip. If a black dad shows up at the parent-teacher conference with the mom, oh, it's a wrap. Oh, it's a wrap. From that point on, the teacher is going to put so much respect on that student's name. Because these teachers, most of them, not all of them, but most of these teachers expect that only the mom is involved in the kid's life and that the black dad is an absent dad. All right. What do you got on that? That's just the gist. She's going to say some more stuff, but she's just going to repeat herself. Um, I mean... Absolutely, she's she is correct. Um, I mean, I don't know if anybody can see it any different than that. And I guess they probably had a different experience and they probably don't understand how to separate <clears throat> their anecdotal experience from reality. But that is absolutely correct. I mean, I, I know I had a situation with my son where he was being bullied and, you know, he defended himself with a butcher knife and they called the police on him. God damn. And then they tried to uh they tried to take my son to to the to the jail and walk him through that and tell him, you know, this gonna be your future if you don't change your behavior. Oh. And unfortunately at that time I was living in Kentucky, same way I do now. And he was back at home in Chicago. So <clears throat> I had to get on the phone, but even my phone presence with the police officer that walked my son through the jail. And I told him, I said, well, let me finish my statement, my sentence, which was my phone presence made a difference, right? So now he see, no, this this kid ain't just got a mama. Yeah, you went to his mama and tried to scare her into trying to scare my son straight. But no, he got a dad and, and he also got little cousins. And so my 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 suggestion to the officer, which probably I, it worked out, but I probably could have worded it better. But I just told him, if you don't go get them white boys that was bullying my son and and put them through something, I'm going to have his little cousins go out there and beat the shit out of them niggas. It's just that simple. You're not going to do this to my son. You're not going to make him feel bad for defending himself against bullies. Like, I... I taught him that because I went through that 10 years of that as a kid being bullied from school age to 15. And I wasn't going to let my son go through that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that officer went out of his way to make sure that he went and found all three of the dudes that was involved. All three of them had to, um, and their parents had to go through anti-bullying classes and all that extra shit like that. I mean, he was calling me every day for the for the first three days making sure when he found out who each individual was and and them having to, you know what I'm saying, go through their little thing for the situation. You ain't going to just put my son through it, right? Yeah. And my son didn't have no more issues after that. But, you know, I, that's fair, right? Because I remember when my, my girlfriend, her boys was really bad. I'm not going to start getting kicked out of school every two, three days. And then they tried to come at her with the drug situation. And I was, you know, fresh in their lives, not even a couple of months. Again, I might have, I might not have worded it right, but what I said to her was if you let them put them boys on drugs, I'm whooping all y'all ass. Cause I knew what it was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew what they was trying to do. Look at this research. You got these boys out here growing titties behind this shit. You got them acting crazy out here on the trains and shit. When they, it, the worst part is when they try to get off the drugs. When they try to stop using the drugs, that's when they had the most problems. And you see people outside going crazy, and you think they didn't got some bad weed. No, it's prescription drugs, and them trying to get off of it that was doing this to a lot of people. So you know she's absolutely correct about that. So you watching the video again and even listening to you, something just. I realized I, I missed something entirely in a point that she made. 
she said the teacher when when they know that the dad is involved um think about it they don't they already expect that the dad is not involved mm. so it, it's it's more of a sense of why even try they already and, and i remember i have both my parents and i remember this happening to me plenty of times because of the dudes that i were hang, was hanging with they just expected that oh he ain't got no daddy either right some of the things they would say the slick remarks well you know this is important that you get they would say stupid like when i was on the basketball team it's important that you get male influence because and they would say stuff like that and i'd be like what are they talking about my daddy come home every day but they were they just assumed that i had um no father in the home this leads to them having short patience with you i i watched that pretty much my whole life teachers have short patience um with you and then what i notice is that my homeboys that um were they had ieps and all of that going on they already had to have meetings with the mom and i'm not gonna lie some of those moms were extremely ghetto they didn't respond well in the meetings to what was going on um one of my homeboys his mom had like five kids in high school at the same time and she was a single mom so she won't trying to hear shit you see what i'm saying she worked at mcdonald's bro she would come over there like listen i didn't get any sleep like you know what i mean you see her you say what's up but she was always that way so the teachers didn't want to deal with her right so they 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 seem exhausted when they think a dad is not involved because they they just write off the kid in their mind so that's what i think she was saying ultimately yeah, it's, it's um, I'm not, I'm not giving these people no excuses. First of all, teachers get paid <laughs> to deal with kids. Second of all, parents, you lay down and head them. So I'm not really giving people any excuses on that. You know, my take is always, if your kids need a whooping, then make sure somebody is there to whoop you while you whooping them. Because you the reason why they the way that they are. Somehow, some way, either directly or indirectly. So, and if you, if you a teacher, I understand that you, you're taking on the responsibility of other people's students, right? My mom just retired from teaching, right? For like two decades. So <clears throat> I know how it can be. She had a thumb dislocated. She had a leg broken, trying to break up a fight. You know, students trying to attack her because she, you know, gave you know, um, prizes to people who did really well, you know what I'm saying? Then that made some of the other students mad. So she went through a lot, I, and I understand that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's you're getting paid to teach kids, not diagnose them. So yeah. I'm just saying, I, my whole thing was keep your diagnosis to yourself. I don't care about that. You can tell me what's going on with my son, what like what you're experiencing, and then I can deal with it from there. Other than that, I don't keep your diagnosis to yourself. I think they really need to do like a a special or a study. If you think about like what the government's paid to do on a daily basis, butterflies, ants, whatever, they study a lot of crap. What I have not seen, what I would like to see, but I have not seen is, oh, well, this is the this is what the teachers and the women are complaining about classrooms and you see these kids go feral you see them go like up in disrespect the teacher and want to fight and knuckle up with a grown adult it's out of hand it's gotten worse and 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 i just think that when we put men in a position of power and authority in an educational system it'll turn out drastically different than what we have now you have chaos now, but when men come, it, they, we come with discipline, we come with respect, and we also come with consequences. The reason that nobody messes up when a man is around, just sitting in the classroom being quiet, is not only because that there, there's a discipline aspect and there's a, there's a respect aspect, but there's a deep fear of consequences. Should I really get up and like fart and throw my eraser or is this man over here going to do something when I when I do that? I'm not going to do that same crap I did yesterday with the substitute teacher. It's the it's the man that brings the enforcement. We can we can um 
when I tell you to sit down and be quiet, it's not that I'm asking you politely. It's the fact that I'm physically like capable enough to make you do what I want you to do. And and that's what the 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 healthy respect and fear that that kids should have um uh, uh should be present within the educational system. I think that when they leave home, um they act any way they want to, right? That it's just the women there. What what can the woman do? What is she gonna beat me or spank me? I'm not afraid of that. What is she gonna talk to me and 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 uh what is the most a woman can do compared to a man? So so these kids are hyper aware that consequences coming from a man, you don't want the smoke. That, that it's not even a consideration of effing up anymore. That joke is not being told that day. It isn't. I mean, EBD, EBD, I don't know. You putting some extras on it, man. They, a they, lot of it. <laughs> they, I'm not they, saying there's going to be priests and nuns, but... Nah, man, hold on. They will tr look, look, look. They they will buck at the dudes too, but a group, a group of men, it just happens less often. If they're a significant male influence, like, come on, man, I I can ah, uh, let me not exaggerate. Maybe no, this was Brandon Middle School, Virginia B. Sixth grade, you start fighting, coach pushing you over, like tackling you, right. Disorienting you like you are like oh shit is my head bleeding off oh, yeah y'all little niggas hey, he'll call us little niggas y'all little, little niggas ain't fighting in my goddamn class get your ass up do you remember do you remember <laughs> wait 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 do you remember that if you're in school we and I think we were all we we may have all experienced it at some point do you remember in school when there was a fight that had to go down between two dudes you had to schedule the fight away from the men and the teachers and the principal you had to schedule it out somewhere that no adults can see you because if adults get wind that there's a fight going on they will break that shit up right it's not even happening you had to schedule a fight like i'll meet you three o'clock by the willow trees where you know when mr uh simpson leaves trees. and all well whatever it is you know what i mean but 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 uh i'll meet you by the joke the jungle gym when Mr. with Mr. Simpson, the vice principal, leaves, Damn. it's on. You did, or something like that. Y'all remember when teachers could push you back? I'm pretty sure I seen a student get slapped before, but I don't we don't promote such things. No, I went I went to Catholic <laughs> school, man. I seen this teacher tighten this kid up, man. He, uh, he yeah, beat him right. he, beat Talk about he he like balled up his fist. Like, I wish you would kid like swung. Kind of got his shoulder. He kind of looked to the left, like Who may he you? rest in this peace. Was, oh, that never mind. I did see it because this was the days before cameras. Boy, that kid got slapped so damn hard upside his head. Yo, yeah, see that? Guy, man, this guy was getting some body blows and everything, man. I said, yeah, man, like, we were like in third, fourth grade, man. This guy just he beat the shit out of this kid, man. Yeah, yeah but men and women teachers, or uh, they had more leeway to deal with their students than now. Because kids are now emboldened. Parents are looking for lawsuits. They're not addressing the bad behavior and the temperament of their children because <laughs> the children are actually modeling what they see at home. Hey, let me uh, let me address. AP says there's no money in teaching. You know what the problem is, AP? There's definitely money now if you want to go play Joe Clark. I told you I had a frat brother that was rounding up all of the educators. Talking about some, hey, hey, I got an opportunity for y'all. For a Houston independent school district, the state had to come take it over. That That's how much they were missing their mark on testing. The state had to come take it over. Then they launched this thing last summer talking about basically 92K, 100, like 100 grand salaries. But it was for the worst schools. <laughs> the worst school. And, and, and that's why they were recruiting men to, to go into those schools. And um, when they asked me, I said, OK, I'm actually trying to make an impact. If you're not going to send me to the elementary school, don't send me to the high school to go to to go basically buck break these kids that can't be broken. They already the way they, they're going to be. If you want to make real change, send me to the elementary school. They didn't give not one man that elementary school assignment, not one. You know. The thing that always bothers me about these kind of conversations is that we can't have them. I don't think it's possible to have them prudently just by discussing the people, right? 
and I'll give you an example. When a when a flower isn't growing right, they don't criticize the flower. They criticize the environment. Mm -hmm. They check the environment. And it's like what we do is we we Monday back quarterback and things, right? Like we Monday quarterback and things, right? Like we sitting back and we saying this is what's going on with black people. But it isn't an eight, right? <laughs> it's like it's it's reasons how we got here. Yeah. Right? It's reasons oh, yeah. why all of this stuff that you see is going on. Um I remember years ago when they first started mentioning how um, my mom's generation was telling us these little girls is too big. What's going on? <laughs> right? They not even in high school yet. They got more ass than we do. Then you started finding out about steroids in the food. Mm, right? Preservatives. The, you see what I'm saying? You started finding out about that type of stuff, right? Um, and that's what I'm saying. It's like it's like the Hidden Color series. It's so much stuff going on behind the scenes that the majority of people don't know about. See, some of you all might know, but you don't even address it really. You know, myself included when we're talking about certain things. Uh, but I get way more pushback on the fact that I'm willing to go back. I'm willing to say, yeah, well, you know, in 1960 this, and in 1970 that, and in 1980 that, because if you don't understand why a person is doing something the way that they're doing it, how can you ever correct it? You just want to beat it out of them. You just want to jail it out of them. You just want to curse it out of them. You want to shame it out of them. That's not going to work, right? And uh, and it's it, and it's sad because it's like I always have to use a vagina example to get people to understand how critical it is. But if you got a, a young adolescent girl who's being molested at home every day, I don't care what you telling her. When she come outside, right. it don't matter what you telling her at school. It don't matter what you telling her on the playground. It don't matter what book she reading. None of that is going to matter as long as when she goes home, it's the same environment. Hmm. And she has to deal with the same trauma. It's not going to change anything. So until we as a people, like we, it's cool to have the conversations. It makes for good conversation. It makes for good shows. But until we really ready to, ha to have the deeper conversation where we actually can pick out how we got here, what happened, why exactly do we act like this? Okay, this is the thing over here that you need to understand so you can understand why you do that and know that that is not who you have to be. That's how you tell a person that that's not who they have to be. Beans, you know why we can't ever get there? Because you make an excellent point. This is why we can't ever get there. And this is my another harsh criticism of mine. You have to acknowledge the person who's willing to have that conversation or all persons that are willing to have that conversation about that little girl. Let's say her parents, her uncle, her immediate family, they all have to acknowledge where they fucked up. Yeah, they will. That that is the that's where we're stuck right now. Just like you said, it's everybody else's fault. If, if, if everybody got to acknowledge where they fucked up so they don't want to have the conversation to begin with. Well, let me ask Beans a question, though, right? One of the things, Beans, that you, and you, again, you make some great points. I think one of the reasons why we can't get to in-depth on some of these conversations is because we're on a panel. Nobody gets enough time to be able to really get mm -hmm. into depth to explain what they need to explain on a, on these kind of panels. It has to be like a show that you're running yourself, pretty much, and talking about a particular topic. I would just tell people, and I've done this, if you go back to 1960, in your own mind, everybody can have a different list. And think about all the water, watershed things that happened all the way up until where we are now. You can actually look at every event and say, this might have impacted the society this way. This one did it that way. And you start just even if you just start with the advent of the birth control pill and the impact that it had on, on girls and the sex and men and everything else. And you can make up your own conclusions how that impacted. You could talk about the deaths of the presidents. You could talk about some of the legislation with Lyndon B. Johnson. You can talk about the Monaghan Report. 
you could talk about all these things. And if you, uh, the war on drugs, uh, you know, everything. And then you could say, okay, these things have a certain amount of impact on society that, that helps us kind of understand how the daisy chain of events got us to where we are. And then you might be able to pinpoint why marriages started to say, hey, listen, I don't even want to be married. You know, I just want to fool around. I want to have millions of sex partners. And this is both men and women. So I'm just saying, so those are the kind of things, but it's hard to explore that on a panel. I you know, uh, with, with a lot of people there. I did, I, well, when you say with a lot of people, yes. That's what I, I mean. Think, if if yeah. I have my own thing, yeah. But If with, you with, have, it, but it, see, it also depends on who's on the panel. More so. Well, than that's true. Panel, right? I mean, that's true. Because I mean, if you, that's our understanding in the beginning, we, then we I had can take a panel, it. We had a panel yesterday. I did a show. Okay. Um, And I mean, it went <laughs> exceedingly well. Like, I can't even tell you how proud that uh, how proud I am of that show yesterday like it, it, that was, it really was crazy man um super dope show no disrespect and and as was that men, on your channel yeah yeah okay. as men we as men we get the one of his 39 show. channels one of his 39 yeah, <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> as as men we can be a, we're not always stoic as Kenny right we we can get really demonstrative Right? right, and so when that happened, you know what we did? We 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 got demonstrative, and then we laughed. Right, you know what I'm saying? Because we understood we men, we not, you know what I'm saying? We not just gonna sit around and you know hum by him and do like we're gonna when we talking about something passionately, it's gonna come out, and then we gonna we gonna you know dial it back when it's necessary. And and so it was a super dope conversation. Um, and it start the conversation was about capitalism, and I mean we we went as far back as maybe the 1800s in that conversation, you know what I'm saying? So, but nobody was afraid to do it. It was a panel full of intellects. It was a, it was a panel full of people who like to think. And I think that's more of the problem when you talk about panels than it just being a panel. Is right. that the personalities on the panel matter. You, you gotta have people who if you say in 1999, they go, oh, this nigga want to go back to the 19th century. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it can't, it can't be like that because if think about it, like what, what, what the, this is what always strikes me. If you're going to tell me for some reason, everybody willing to go back to the 1950s when they come back to telling women how they need to be <laughs> right. Automatically. No, so y'all need to be like how y'all was back then, you know, versions and, and cooking and cleaning and all this other stuff. It's like, okay, we'll do that. Then. Do that in every conversation. Right. So let's do that as it pertains to black people. You, if I can tell you that, you know, less than a century ago, there was a time when you had 60 to 70 percent of black adults married. Right. right? You didn't have all this, ex, you know, crime. You didn't have all this. ADHD, you know, all this type of stuff. You didn't have all this promiscuity as it pertains to the younger girls. Like, if I can tell you that that time existed, right, then you can't tell me that this is just how black people are. <laughs> you don't get to say that. It's not just how these niggas is. No, it's not. There was a time when this was the case. So what happened? You can literally just track it. And when you start going down things, you see there was a lot of stuff external from us as a community or as yeah. individuals that impacted the change that we see today. So that's what I'm saying. When we had that conversation and you start seeing what's going on, then you start realizing, oh my God, wait, this is an environmental problem. That's what right. this is. And what we're really telling black people is just keep getting over it. No matter what dom the dominant society put in front of you, no matter what they doing to your food, no matter what they doing to the air, no matter what the media is doing to you as far as programming go, no matter how the schools are failing you, just get over it. And that sounds insane to me to just keep telling people to just keep getting over it. That's not new. They've been telling us that since we uh, was promised that 40 acres and a mule we never got redline and COINTELPRO and things of that nature. And as for myself, not a real big armchair quarterback. I've been in the youth basketball sports education, being that I do have financial licenses besides my communication job, which I'm a tech. 
because I believe in putting back. So I get the points that you're putting on the table, beans. You spoke eloquently about these things that we as people need to each one teach one. I figure if you go and put a positive word and steer someone in a positive direction, you are playing a part toward the progress rather than the detriment of our community, which is impacted the most. So I do get what you're saying, but these conversations nonetheless have to be had because a lot of people just fly right by them. They would hear certain people speaking passionately, wanting to turn, but like watching that same old trash TV program, it will be reciprocal determinism. Once you hear it enough, it'll start itching you till you want to soothe that itch. What is really going on? Why am I constantly seeing this, the uproar with men wanting to be respected, wanting their woman to fall back in line, not be subjugated, but to understand that submission should be natural. You shouldn't be asking for 50-50. That's what they say, pardon me. But who are they to say that? Who are they to say that they should be well kept? Because when women are 18, their, their value is very high. 18 to, what is it, about 30, somewhere around there. When men would give them the world, men have to accrue value over time. So it's not a fair playing field for us. So when I hear certain women say, well, you know, a man should come in, cross all T's, dot all I's, 800 credit score, enough in his uh, coffers to take care of me and keep me in a, in a kept life where it's soft living Gucci and gold, you know, you miss me with that. When the numbers, as stated, doesn't, doesn't go straight across the line that everybody can give you that. So if you're not ready to at least cleave to somebody that you see has ambition, who's actually out there working, four hands, two heads put together to make a good living and become financially well, and y'all have a problem with that and love pointing narratives stating that why that can't work for you, well, just stay with you. Because there's a lot of good brothers out here that are catching the message that we come out on these panels to catch. Not everybody will get it. Some pander, some, as they say, simp, or what have you. But the message needs to be heard nonetheless. We're not always right. But that's why we're a collective of men on this panel, as well as lady, to come to at least an amical agreement or agree to disagree on some things, but we're forwarding the conversation. No, nah, Didi ain't a lady. She a demon. That's a demon right there. Yeah. I, I, how are you guys doing? I didn't go far away. How are you guys doing? I was listening to you guys. We know. We know. Let oh, me get this. Yeah. Yeah. AP okay. with $20. Says, Thanks again, Trigger Mike. Good show. Solid panel. It'd be cool to hear perspective from female educators. Good show, brother. Oh, yeah. That AP guy was awesome. Richard, uh, uh, I'm away from the chat for real, for real. Uh, no, that you know what? <laughs> there, was, there was a, a chick. I don't like calling girls chicks no more. A colleague I, that I have, I'm going to um, get her. She has interesting perspective. She is a, it, it's more of these coming up, coming around, by the way. Um, she's a divorce lawyer, but for men only. He only deals with male custody, mailed it. So all of her clips, all of her Instagram stuff, she local. I met her a long time ago. Um, yeah, so she'll drop, men, this is your rights for the, so I think it'd be pretty cool to have some female lawyers or lawyers that one on the, that does primarily the men, one does primarily the women. Uh, just to tell you how ugly these situations are, what people lose. So I thought that'd be interesting to do as well. But y'all, spring break is over. So these kids go back to school tomorrow. I'm taking my black ass <laughs> to sleep. All right. I'm on deck five something in the morning. All right. Good so night. I appreciate everybody coming through. Thank you, Didi. Beans, my man, Ikene, EBD, R Payne, Kenny. Thanks for coming through, my brother. Everybody else that came up tonight, AP, JR. Who else came up? Damn, let me go came to be my man miles came through as well so thank y'all hink also and ebd 
I already said EBD. That's why your yeah, ass don't be here. <laughs> if you go stand in one place, if you go sit in one place, where you even been going, man? Like, you violated so many no. traffic laws by being on camp. No, no, what happened is that uh, my friend of mine, his, fr uh, his friend is having a birthday party. So we just driving around town trying to find somewhere to drink. Oh, okay. All right. it, 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 yeah, I don't we, know if you're trying to convince us or yourself that you are home, <laughs> but we get the picture. All right. I'm not at home. Right, hey, your sister the very kind of quiet today. All right. Check that out. I'm out. All right, Beans. Thank y'all for coming through to the Trigger Mike Show. We're going to do this more often. Dope conversation, dope people, as always. Thank y'all for keeping it respectful. I enjoyed everybody's points of view. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do it like that. Shout out to the Lapeef Network. Y'all make sure y'all get that Assured Man Naturals. That is the Lapeef Sugar Curls collab. All right? Order some of that for your man's beard. All right? Thank y'all for coming through. Uh, check out your local YouTubers, whoever's live right now. Um, show that support and we out. We're going to do it like that. Appreciate it.